what's up students welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to solve the complete 13 questions of the 2021 mathematics yx so as usual just follow along if you have any question or any subject you want me to create a video on it drop it in the comment box down below as usual you you are aware that the exam is into two sections the section one you are there's the first five questions you're supposed to answer all the questions while the remaining part there's a section b you have to select five questions out of eight so all in all you're answering 10 questions out of 13. so just follow step by step in case you are lost you can pause the video and watch again so in this case let's let's give it a word all right our very first question question one a the question says mr Safo. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Borrowed $25,000 from Afiek for financial service at 21% simple interest per annum for three years. If he was able to pay back the loan in two years at equal yearly installment, how much did he pay each year? So, actually, there are two methods of solving this, even though the methods do not vary much, but I'm going to solve the two methods, then you choose which one is suitable for you. So from the question now, you know that he actually borrowed the $25 to start a business. So that amount he borrowed is actually the principal too. So we're going to say borrowed, right? Which is same thing as the principal P is equals to $25,000. Then at 21 simple interest per annum. So in percent, what is always in percent is rate. That's R, right? So. 21%. So for three years, so that's the time. So we say time now is three years. Right? And remember, he is to pay it in two years. So payable in two years. Right? So you can say payable. So the question one, the question wants us to calculate how much he will pay within these two years. Right? How much in each year, how much will he pay for two years so that he'll be able to pay back the m money he borrowed? So the first method is the normal simple interest formula, which says is, which is I, that's interest is equal to the principal, that's P, times the time, times the rate, all over 100. So this one is, we already have the principal, which is $25,000. So we said 25,000 times is the time, which is three years. Then time is the rate, which is 21. So over 100. So this 100, cancel this, this is the two, two zeros here, right? So we are left with I is equals to 250 times 3 times 21 so if you multiply use the calculator is 15,750 dollars so 15,750 dollars so this is the interest he made after he started the business so in order for us to get the total amount payable we're going to add the amount he borrowed plus his interest. Okay, so now we said amount payable is equal to what borrowed plus the interest he made. So now, what is our our borrowed cash? The borrowed amount was twenty five thousand dollars. So plus the interest, which is fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So if you add it, we're gonna have twenty five thousand. It's cost of forty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So forty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So that's the total amount payable. In order for us to know the amount it's going to pay each year for in two years, we're going to divide it by two, right? So if we divide this amount, the amount we will get, he will pay the such amount for two years in order for you to pay the complete loan or the money he borrowed. So we're going to say amount paid in each year 
month for each year. It's cost what? $40,750 divided by 2. So it's cost $20,375. So that's the amount you're going to pay. So this is the amount you will pay. $20,375. That's the first method. He's going to pay this amount twice, right? So let's see the other method. So the second method now, there's a formula for it. You are going to calculate the payable amount straight forward. And the payable amount is actually given by a formula. A is equals to the principal into 1 plus R, that's the rate, time is a time over 100. So if you substitute this, already we have the principal. The principal is $25, right? The amount you borrowed to start the business is going to be equals to P, which is 25,000 into 1 plus the red is 21%. So 21 times time, which is 3 years over 100. So if we open this up, we're going to have 25,000 into 1 plus 21 times 3 divided by 100. 21. Because it's 63 over 100. So 63 divided by 100. Into 1 plus. So divided by 100. It's 0.63. Right? So. This is going to be equals to 25,000 into 1 plus 0 0.63 is going to be 1.63. So multiply by 25,000. We multiply by 25,000, of course, we're going to have 25,000 is actually $40,750. So $40,750. Same thing with the paper amount we've calculated earlier on in the first method. Can you see? So now remember that he is to pay it in two years, payable in two years. So the amount he will pay for each year, so we say amount for each year, it's equal to 40,750 divided by two. Of course, we're going to get the same thing. The amount payable is going to be what? So each year is going to be $20, 20 dollars, 20 thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars so these are the two methods you can choose any one that you like so let's move to the next All right question 1b the question says two consecutive numbers are such that the sum of thrice the smaller and twice the larger is 17 fine correct to three significant figures the smaller number as a percentage of the sum of the two numbers so in this case, we don't know the numbers. And when we say something is consecutive, that means the difference, since the difference between them has not been set, is going to be 1. So if the first number is x, the second number will be what? x plus 1. So now we say let the consecutive numbers be what? Let the numbers be, the first one is what? x, right? The second one will be what? x plus 1. So these are the consecutive numbers. But one thing you should note here is that, that the sum of tries the smaller number, sum of tries the smaller number, and twice the larger number. So this is the smaller number. So the smaller number tries of this smaller number plus twice of this larger number. Since this is the smaller number and this is a larger number. So it's going to be tries of x, that's 3 times x, right? Tries of x, that's 3 times x plus twice of the larger number that's two times what x plus one is equals to 17 that's the question so try the smaller number that's three times the, the smaller number which is x the sum plus twice the larger number so this one is going to be 3x plus open this bracket these two multiply by this x and two multiply by this one now it's going to be 
2 times x is 2x plus 2 times 1 is 2 is equal to 17. So now collect like terms. Of course, these ones now are x and x, so they can add each other. We're going to say 3x plus 2x is 5x plus 2 is equal to 17. So if you collect like terms, this number, these two now will move to this side. And once it moves, it becomes subtraction because when a number moves to the other side, the sign changes. So we say collect like terms. So it's going to be 5x is equal to 17 minus 2. So this one is going to be 5x is equal to 17 minus 2 is 15. Right? So what we're going to do, we divide both sides by 5. Divide both sides by 5. We have, so we're going to divide this by 5 and this by 5. So if you divide it, you know, 5 can go this to this 5. Right? 1. And 5 here is 1. 5 here is 3. Right? So our x now is equals to 3. Now this is our smallest number. Why? Because from the question we said let x be the smaller number and x plus 1 will be be the larger number. So since x was the smallest number then and now x is equals to 3. So we can say therefore the smaller number is equals to 3. Right? Then the larger number now will be x plus 1 which is 3 plus 1 since x is equal to 1 so because what 3 plus 1 which is 4 right now the question says find correct to three significant figure the smaller number as a percentage of the sum of the two numbers so now we have to get the sum of the two numbers the sum of two numbers will be equal to what? 3 plus 4, right? Which is equal to 7. So this so this is the sum of the two numbers. So you have to express the smaller number as a percentage of the sum of the two numbers. So now the percentage now will be equal to the what the smaller number the smaller number all over the what the sum then times what 100 because it's percentage so this is going to be so this is going to be percentage is equal to the smaller number is what is 3 right from here so we're going to be 3 over the sum which is 7 here yeah. 7 times 100 so this is same thing as 3 times 100 is 300 over 7 times 1 is 7. So 300 divided by 7. It's equals to, so the answer is equals to 42.857. Remember the question says in 3 significant figure. So in 3 significant figure, it's going to be 42.9. So it's equal to 42.9%. Point, so that's the answer. So that's it for this question. Let's move to the next question. All right, question two. The question says a man left town M at 10 o'clock a.m. and traveled by car to town M at an average speed of 72 kilometers per hour. He spent two hours for a meeting and returned. To town M by bus at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. If the distance covered by the bus was 2 kilometers longer than that of the car and he arrived at town M at 1.55 p.m., calculate the distance from M to N. So from the question now, it says that the man left town M at 10 a.m. to town N. So let's assume this is our town M. So this is town M and town N is here. This is town M and this is town N. Right? So he left this town, he left town M 
at 10 a.m. So time here. Ten AM, right? Ten o'clock AM. And he traveled to N. Then he traveled to N, right? So and traveled by car to N, right? So this one is by car. He traveled by car. At an average speed of seventy two kilometers per hour. So here the speed here. Because what seventy two kilometers per hour he spent two hours for meeting so at n now this town n he spent two hours for meeting so we're here we'll write meeting for what two hours right and return to town n by bus so going back he used bus not by car again he returned by bus so this is the bus so we're right now by boss right return by boss at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour so now speed here is 40 kilometers per hour per hour so if the distance covered by the bus was two kilometers longer than that of the car so of course we don't know the distance covered by the car so in this case we'll write by the car and distance should be x right so here we'll say distance is x right then remember that the bus was what two kilometers longer so this is x kilometers right x kilometers then by bus now was two kilometers longer than that of car so that means it's going to be x plus two right so distance here is going to be what x plus 2 kilometers so that's the distance by bus so and he arrived town m so when he went back he arrived at in at 1 55 pm so now the time here when he arrived so arrive time is 1 55 pm so he left town M by 10 a.m. uses the car and travel on a speed of 72 kilometers per hour then to town N and had a meeting for two hours and returned back to M by bus using the speed of 40 kilometers per hour and he arrived town M back he arrived town M again by 1:55 p.m. so no so how are we going to calculate the distance covered from M to N? Now we, if you can see, we have the speed for car and the speed for bus, right? So if that's the case, all right, the first thing to do is to calculate the total time from M to N, including the meeting, right? So we said total time, including meeting, right? So it, how are we going to get the total time including the meeting? Of course, it's very, very possible. If we subtract this starting time from the arrive time, we're going to get the total time he spent, right? Including the meeting, this two hours meeting, right? So in this case, we're going to set the total time is equal to arrive time. minus starting time starting right so if you subtract the starting time from the arrive time we're going to get the total time he spent so what is the arrive time the arrive time is equals to 1 55 p.m right minus the starting time is 10 o'clock a.m so how are we going to subtract this? Of course, you know that subtracting this is not going to be easy. Why? Because this one is in PM while this one is in AM. So how are we going to do it so that we'll be able to subtract it? Of course, we have to convert this PM by adding 12 so that it will be the timing should be in 24 hours. As it is now, the timing is in 
12 hours. So if you want to convert uh, time from 12 hours to 24 hours, just add 12 to the PM. So in this case now, we want to convert PM to AM, right? So that we'll be able to subtract it because they must have the same value or the same unit so that the calculation will be able to work. So in this case, we're going to add what this 155 PM plus 12. Just add 12 to it. If you add 12 to it, it's going to be 1355, right? So with this 1355 now, we'll be able to subtract the 10 from it, right? So it's going to be now our total time is equals to 13.55 minus what? Minus our 10. Because this 13.55 is as this, but not in 12 hours, but in 24 hours. Minus 10. So if you subtract this, of course, 13 minus 10 is going to be 3. So this is going to be 3.55, right? So that is the total time he spent, including the meeting hours right he spent three hours 55 minutes so now the next thing is to calculate the total time excluding the meeting hours we want to remove the meeting hours remember the first one is including the meeting hours right so it's the total time excluding meeting right Excluding the meeting time. So how going to do it? It's very simple. We're going to set these hours that we've calculated. These total hours. Remember that these total hours includes the meeting hours or meeting time. So in this case, we're going to set time now. In this case, is going to be total time. Minus minutes, minus meeting time. So what is our total time? Our total time is three hours fifty-five minutes. So we're going to write three hours fifty-five minutes minus our meeting time, which is what two hours. With what two? So if you subtract it, our time in excluding the meeting is going to be three minus two is one hour fifty-five minutes. So that's the time this man used in only traveling, excluding the meeting. So if we're going to include the meeting now, it's going to be 3 hours 55 minutes. But excluding the meeting is 1 hour 55 minutes. So the next thing to do is to see how we're going to calculate our distance. Alright, the next thing to do is to convert this time to minute. So that it will, it will make our calculation easier, right? Remember, it is 1 hour 55 minutes. So if we're going to convert it to minutes, it's going to be easy. How? This hour will convert it to minutes and add it to the existing minute. So how are we going to convert this 1 hour to minutes? Of course, it's very easy. So in hours now, time in hours, times now, time in minutes. So time in minutes. It's going to be what? It's going to be this 1 times 60. You have converted it to minutes plus our what? 55 minutes. So if you do that, we're going to have our time. It's going to be 60 plus 55. It's going to be what? It's going to be 115 minutes now. So this is the total time the man used in only transportation and traveling from M to N and back to M without the meeting. So the next thing to do is, so the next thing to do is we're going to assign the time traveled by car to be T1 from 
m to n to be t1 so the time here will be t1 and the time for returning from n to m as t2 so if this is t1 and this is t2 remember that we've gotten the total time he used in only transportation so if you add t1 and t2 together it should be able to give us that total time which is what 115 minutes that we've calculated right so in this case we're going to say let c1 equals what time traveled by car right and t2 be time traveled by bus so now remember if you add the t1 plus the t2 it should be able to give us this number of minutes that's the time he used in just transportation so it's going to be 115 minutes so we're going to convert everything to hours now it's just for us to divide it by 60 so if you do this this one will be in hours now just divide by 60 if you divide by 60 of course it's going to return us back to this but the reason of doing this is to make our work easier is that not so the next thing so i'm going to use the other side of the board now we have gotten the total time the man used in just transportation that's traveling right the next thing to do is for us to remember that that speed is equal to distance over time so the question is why do we need this remember that we are calculating distance the question says we should calculate the distance from m to n and the speed the individual speed for car has been given and that of bus has been given so if that's the case since we have the speed and we've gotten the time the total time now that means it's very easy for us to calculate the distance is that not so so now since we have we know that speed is equals to distance over time we can make time the subject formula why why do we need time we're going to see it later so balance this one with one cross multiply if you cross multiply we'll have the word distance now is equal to speed time is time and remember that we're making time the survey formula so we're going to divide both sides by speed so this speed will cancel this speed right we are left with time is equals distance over speed right so we have this now since we already know the distance traveled by bus and the speed used by bus that means you can get the time is that not? so let's see so getting this formula now will help us how it's going to help us to calculate the individual time for the bus and that of the car so let's see how it's going to be so distance traveled by car now was what by car was x kilometers and that of uh, bus was x plus two so in this case now we're going to say distance traveled by car as we know now by car now time for car so we say time for car now of course you know that the time now is time is equals to distance now what is the distance we're well, we following this formula what is the distance of course the distance is x for car since we know that the distance now here the distance for car we've seen to be x so it's going to be x over what is the speed for car so speed for car was what 72 kilometers per hour so distance is x and the speed is 72 we got 72 and see that's the time for car then for bus now the bus now so we're going to say time for bu the bus The time for the bus now is going to be time is equals to time is equals to what distance what is the distance distance over speed so let's check it the distance by bus was what 
x plus 2 we've seen it to be x plus 2 and the speed is what 40 kilometers per hour so it's going to be the distance which is x plus 2 over the speed which is 40 kilometers per hour just like this formula following right so now we have gotten the individual time it's now time for us to substitute it into this where we have t1 and t2 remember we said that the t1 is time traveled by car and time traveled by bus is t2 so you can see the importance of using all this so in this case now we in this case now we're not going to use this formula now so it's going to be what you know that t1 plus t2 is equal to 115 over 60 right so if you add this t1 and t2 which is this one this is our t1 and this is our t2 if you add them we should be able to get the total time he traveled to and um, fro so this one is going to be substitute where we see t1 we're going to put well, this and wherever we see two we're going to put this because this uh the time because this is the t1 the time time one right and time two so this one is going to be x over 72 plus for t2 is going to be x plus 2 over 40 is now equals what 115 over 60 can you see so we have this what are we going to do of course we can take the lcm if we take the lcm of this if we take the lcm draw a line and take the lcm what's the lcm of 72 40 and 60 of course the lcm now it's not a new thing the lcm if you check the lcm it's going to be 360 so i'm going to say 360 divided by 72 and multiply it by the numerator right so 360 divided by 72 is equal to 5 right so 5 times this the numerator which is x is going to be 5x plus 360 divided by 40 it's 9 right so 9 times the numerator is going to be 9 times x plus 2 right this numerator then the next one is equals to 360 divided by 60 is 6 and 6 times is what 6 times 115 so times 115 is 690 so right 690 so whenever you take the lcm of any equation where there is any equation always cancel the lcm but if it's an expression that means if there's no equality sign you it was it's going to be the denominator so in this case now we have a straight line equation which is 5x plus now this now open this bracket will be 9 times s 9x plus 2 times 9 is 18 is equal to 690 right 5 plus 9 is 14x right so it's going to be 14x and this plus 18 is equal to 690 so this 18 now we have to move to the other side because it is a number right this now is going to be 14x is equal to 690 now minus 18 right so in this case we're going to have 14x is equal to 690 minus 18 so minus 18 is 672 of 672 now divide both sides by what 14 so divide both sides by 14 so if you divide both by 14 here this cancel this so 672 divided by 14 the answer is 48 so x is close to 48 so 48 kilometers right so that is actually the distance covered from M to N is what 
48 kilometers so that's our answer it's pretty long right so just follow along follow it step by step you're going to understand it the first thing so the first thing to do always is to calculate the amount the total time traveled including the meeting then you subtract the meeting from it if you subtract the meeting then convert the time to minutes and then later on to hours then make the time travel by car to be t1 and time travel by bus to be t2 then try to find the time even with the unknown of t1 and t2 then you subtract into the equation so the distance traveled from m to n is actually 48 kilometers so this is 48 kilometers that's the distance it's pretty much but that's why it's a question on its own try to understand it right so let's move to the next all right question three the question said the points x y and z are located such that y is 15 kilometers south of x z is 20 kilometers from x on a bearing of 270 degrees calculate correct to a two significant figures line y z and b the nearest degree the bearing of y from z so the first thing is to understand the question there are three points but the first thing you should know here is that y is 15 kilometers south of x that means x is a starting point so english is very important in bearing if you don't understand the starting point you may you may likely go wrong right so understanding where to start from is very important so in this case x is our starting point and remember that y is south of x so use your ruler to draw the compass so this is point x so from the question now y is 15 kilometers south of x so towards the south where is the south of x of course this is the south of x right so 15 kilometers south of x use your ruler to draw the south 15 kilometers right draw it down this is the south of x also draw the compass this will be our y draw the compass too so this is our y so it's 15 kilometers right so let's write the 15 kilometers then the next thing to note is that z is 20 kilometers from x on a bearing of 270 degrees remember is from x so we're going to draw 270 degrees from x so x is the point of focus now so remember that from here to here is 90 right then from here to here is another 90 which is 180 from here to here is 270 so this is where line z is going to move so remember it's 20 kilometers that means it's going to be longer than this you can also be using your ruler to measure it making one centimeter to one kilometer right so this one now will be 15 centimeters so you, you draw a straight line from x so draw the compass on z also this will be our z remember that this is 20 kilometers right and this is 270 degrees so use the ruler to join z and y so this is how our diagram will look like so in this case now we're not yet really true remember that this is 270 and this angle is actually a right angle which is what 90 degrees and since this place is 90 degrees that means this is a right angle triangle is that not so following our question now the first question says we should find we should find line y z so that means we're going to find this place so we're going to find small x so in finding small x is actually very easy why because this is a right angle triangle and in the solution of right angle triangle we use the Pythagoras 
rule on the Pythagoras theorem, which says that which states that the square of the hypotenuse is always equal to the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent, right? So we're going to say A now. So using Pythagoras, which says that hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent. So in this case, where is our hypotenuse? Our hypotenuse is the longest, which is our x here. So it's going to be x squared is equal to what is our opposite? Of course, our opposite is this one here, 20 kilometers. So it's going to be 20 square plus our adjacent is going to be 15 kilometers, right? So 15 square. So this is going to be so x squared now is equals to 20 square is 20 times. 20 so we said 20 square is 400 is equal to 400 so 400 plus 15 square is is 225 so 225 so 400 plus 225 plus 400 Is 625 x square is equal to 625 so what we're going to do we take square root of both sides we take square of both sides that's this one here and this one here right so this square will cancel this square root and x is equal to what's the square of 625 is 25 25 kilometers so that is the distance from z to y or line z y so the next thing is to calculate the nearest degree the bearing of y from z so y from z so it's from z, this z here y from z so that means you're going to calculate from here up to this place right but you know that it's not easy for us to calculate this way we have to calculate this angle first then we already know that this is a right angle 90 then we we'll add it right so 2 now oh that's b or b bearing of y from z right so so how are we going to calculate this angle let's make it theta how are we going to calculate theta? It's actually very simple using trigonometric ratio, right? So in using trigonometric ratio, remember we have 20 kilometers and 15 kilometers, right? Even including the 25 kilometers, which is supposed to be here. So, but in this case, we're going to use this 20 and 15 kilometers. Using 20 and 15 kilometers, that is the opposite and the adjacent. And remember in trigonometric ratio, remember we have a cheat called so, ka, tua, where sine is equals to opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite all over adjacent. So, in this case, we have opposite and adjacent, right? So, that means we're going to use tan. We're going to use tan. So, in this case, we're going to say tan theta is equal to opposite all of our adjacent right and what is the opposite the opposite is 15 right so we're going to say 15 over what is the adjacent our adjacent is 20 right 20 you know? so 15 divided by 20 is 0 0.75 so we say 0 0.75 is equals to 0 0.75. Is that not? So now we so now tan theta now tan theta is equal to 0 0.75. We're looking for tan, we are looking for theta, not tan. So we're going to divide both sides by tan. Tan and tan. Make theta the solid formula. Of course, now theta is going to be theta is equal to 
something as tan inverse of 0 0.75 so what is tan inverse of 0 0.75 shift tan 0 0.75 is 36.86 this goes to 36.86 but remember the question says we should leave our answer in the nearest degree right so if it's in the nearest degree it's going to be theta is equals to round it up it's going to be 37 degrees it's the nearest degrees right So that is the answer 37. But that's not the answer to this question. Remember the question says we should find we should find the bearing of y from z. So we've calculated this one to be 37 degrees. So it's left for us to add it to this 90 so that we'll be able to get the total from here up to this place, right? So we're going to set the answer now plus 90. So we're going to say the bearing. Is equal to 90 plus 37 degrees. So 90 plus 37 degrees is 127 degrees. It's equal to 127 degrees. So we can say therefore bearing of y from z is 127 degrees so that's the answer to our question right let's move to the next question all right question four says in the diagram line ad is a diameter of a cycle with center o so this is ad right it's a straight line it's actually the diameter of a cycle and we are aware that diameter is a line that cut across from the circumference a part of a circumference through the center and to another side of the circumference so in this case it is known as the diameter and if a b d is a triangle in a semicycle this triangle in a semicycle of course this is not a complete cycle it's in a semicycle angle o a b is 34 degrees this is o a b as we said the letter at the center always carries the angle so the angle will be on a right that's what you can see it here on the a. so we have to find a angle o b d where is angle o b d so that means the angle is at b angle o b d o b d so it's here this angle but find the angle at b so the first thing to do question a angle o b d the first thing to do is to note that angle in a semicircle is always 90 degrees so this one here can you see this this one here is 90 degrees why because it's actually angle in a semicycle so that is the reason we're going to say angle what a b d because this is the angle at the center b right so angle o a b d is equals to 90 then we write the reason what's the reason angle angle in the semicircle Is what 90 degrees so that's it uh, so if we're voting this one up as 90 degrees then we will be able to get this place why because this is a triangle and this we are we already have this and we already have this then that means we can get this because sum of angle in a triangle is 180 degrees so we can say that 
this place which is angle D. So we're going to say B T O angle B D O e is what? We'll say angle B D O will be equals to 180 minus this 90 plus this one and this we subtract it so that it give us this triangle 90 plus 34 so what's the reason i want to say the reason here is sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees so this one is going to be therefore our angle b d o is equal to 180 minus 90 plus 34 is going to be 124 and 180 minus 124 is 56 degrees so that means this place is 56 degrees so now one thing you should also know here that since this place is a center and any line that is from the center to any point of the circumference is known as a radius. That means this is a radius, right? Then this time from here to this circumference is also a radius. So we have radius. So since this one is a radius and this one is a radius, that means this line and this line are equal. So, um, when you have two sides equal in a triangle, we call it an isosceles triangle. So since it's an isosceles triangle, remember that two sides of an isosceles triangles are equal so also the base angles are always equal so since this one is equal to this that means this angle is 56 this small angle that we're looking for will also be 56 degrees so we're going to say this angle this and small angle here that we're looking for angle b o b d angle o b d so therefore Therefore, angle O B D is equal to 56 degrees. And what's the reason? Base of an I saw I saw of an isosceles triangle are equal so with this we've calculated our angle o b t so we we'll to write this one here as what 56 degrees right so having gotten this the next question that's our b we have to find angle o c B. Which is which one is angle O C B? Angle O C B at the center, which is this. So we're going to find the angle at C here. So how are we going to find this? In order to get our O C B, the next thing to do is to also get this. Get it in this will go a long way, it will help us. So now what is this angle? Getting this angle is simple. Why? Because we already have this 56, we have 56 here, then we we'll use sum of angle and triangle to get what is here. So in this case, angle B O D, right? Which is here. It's equals to it's equals to what? So we're going to say angle B O D which is here is equal to 180 degrees minus 56 plus 56 so that means if you subtract the base of this angle here subtract here and subtract here we're going to get what is here so in this case what's the theory we're going to say so sum of angles in a triangle sum of 
angles in a triangle. Next to it. So that means our angle BOD is equal to 180 minus 56 plus 56 is 112. So angle BOD will be equal to 180 minus 112 is actually 68 degrees. Right? So we've gotten this place to be 68 degrees. What's the next thing to do? The next thing to note here is that whenever a tangent touches a radius, they always form a right angle. That is, a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. And since this one, we've seen it earlier that it's a radius, it's touching this tangent, right? Then, a right angle is, will be formed. This is a right angle. This is a 90 degrees. Can you see? So, a right angle is always formed when a tangent touches a radius. So, in this case, since this one is 90 degrees, this is 68 degrees. So, now with this one, do you know that this one here is a triangle? Like this. This is a triangle. And we have 68 here. We have 90 here. That means you can get this. Because this is a triangle. So in this case now, you can set angle OCB. Because this is OCB is on what? On C. This is that we're looking for. Angle OCB will be equal to 180 minus 90 plus 68, right? Why? We will say sum of angles in a triangle. So in this case, our angle OCB is equal to 180 minus 90 plus 68 is 158, 158 degrees, right? So angle OCB is equal to 180 minus, minus 158 is equal to 22 degrees. So that is the answer. That means this place is 22 degrees. So let's move to the next question. All right, number five a. The question says a man shared his property among his children as follows. So this is the data. We have to represent the information on a pie chart. So as we are aware that you don't just go directly to represent the information on the pie chart, the first thing you have to convert it into uh, degrees. That is a cycle. Since pie chart is a cycle that represents information. So the first thing to do is to convert these informations so fit into the 360 degrees since it is a cycle. So how are we going to do it? We are going to first add all the percentage shares. After adding the percentage shares, then we we'll pick each of the the children's name with its own percentage. Then we we'll divide it by hundred and multiply. We we'll divide it by the total shares. And multiply it by 360. So that's how we're going to convert it. So let's give it a try. I'm going to use a tabular form so that it will be neat, right? So the, as we said, the first one is the children's name. Then do a line. The next one is their percentage shares. Then lastly, we have the calculation. Right? So, the first thing, we know the first child is Anne. So, we write Anne here. 
and ants share is five. Next person is Afia. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Afia. And Afia's share is 15. Draw the line. The next person is Kojo. And Kojo's share is 10. Then the next one is Nuno. And Nuno's share is 45. Is 45. Then the last person is Akuswa. 25, right? So these are the informations we have. The next thing to do is to find the total shares, right? So draw a line. So the total share will be here. So we're going to add these numbers together. If we add we have 5 plus 15 plus 10 plus 45. Plus 25 is equal to 100, right? So that's our total sh synthetic share is 100. So the next thing is to do the calculation. And as we said earlier, the calculation is the individual share, share over total share. times 100 so that's what we're going to follow so if that's the case now we're going to say we're going to say 5 over the total share which is what 100 times sum of angles in a cycle is 360 so 360 right so what we're going to have this zero we'll cancel this zero we are left with what 5 times 36 Over 10. Right. So 5 times 36 is 180 divided by 10 is 18. So this is 18 degrees now. We've converted it to degrees. So the same thing will happen here. It will be 15 over 100 times 360 it's going to be yeah this will cancel this right we have 15 times 36 over 10 which is equal to 15 times 36 is equal to 540 divided by 10 it's equal to 54 degrees next is that of kojo it's going to be 10 over 100 times 360 so this zero cancel this zero we're left with 10 times 36 over 10 so this one's going to be this one we don't need to the calculator this cancel this right we're left with 36 degrees next one is 45 over 100 that's the total share times 360 so I'll convert it to degrees to this will cancel this. We are left with 45 times 36 over 10. So 45 times 36, 45 times 36 is 1620 divided by 10. It's 162 degrees. 162 degrees then lastly we have that of Akusua is 25 over 100 times 360 so 0 cancel 0 
so I left with 25 times 36 over 10. So we said 25 times 36 is equal to 900 divided by 10. It's 90 degrees. The right angle is equal to 90 degrees. So whenever you're true, you should always calculate the number of these degrees calculated so that you will know if it is exactly 360 degrees if it is not 360 degrees then something is wrong so let's add it and see we have 18 plus 54 plus 36 plus 162 162 plus 90 360 degrees so it's correct so let's draw the pie chart now so as the question rightly said you have to represent this information on a pie chart but we have our calculations here so let's use this information to to draw the pie chart of course the first thing to do is to use a pair of compounds so mark a point with your pencil this is a point right then put your pair of compounds on the point and draw a cycle so draw a cycle that's the first thing to do and the second thing to do is to draw a straight line either vertically or horizontally using your ruler so draw a straight line so this is the first thing so the next thing to do is after drawing the line this line will help us a lot then the next thing to do is to check the first thing on the table the first value on the table the first value on the table is 18 degrees so we use the protractor to measure 18 degrees so measure 18 degrees put your protractor at the center here then measure 18 degrees this is 10 this is 15 16 17 18 is here so this 18 then use your ruler put it from the origin then draw the line so this is actually 18 degrees so this is 18 degrees and remember that this information is for an right so right and there the next person is Afia, which is 54 degrees. Afia is 54 degrees. So, let's, so 54 degrees. Let's use the protractor. So 54 degrees. So you are going to use the protractor on the last line you've drawn, right? So let's turn it. So this is the last line. You use the last line as point of reference. So it's it's 54 degrees. 54. Use your pencil. Mark the point use a ruler to draw the line so draw a line from the center so this is it. so 54 degrees right and remember it's for afia right so afia so this is afia the next person is kojo and kojo is 36 degrees use the protractor Use the protractor and put it on the last line you do. So turn it. Use your pencil. Remember it's 36 degrees. So this 30, then 36 is here. Use the ruler. So use your pencil. Draw the line to connect them. So this is 36 degrees. And this is for Kojo. So this is for Kojo, 36 degrees, right? So the next person, Nuno, which is 162 degrees. So one hundred sixty-two is here. This must be a big angle. Draw it, use your pencil. So remember that this is 162 degrees. So write it. 
This is for Nuno. So the last person here is Akusa. And Akusa's share is 90 degrees, right? So I remember that 90 degrees is a right angle. So in this case, this should give us right angle. The remaining one should give us right angle, right? So let's measure it and say, and if it is not 90 degrees, then that means we are wrong. So because it's 90 degrees, that means we are right. Okay. So this is 90 degrees, right? So we're going to write it. This is Akusa. So this is the representation of this information in the pie chart. And it. So let's move to the next question. All right, question 5B. The question says a box contains five red, three green, and four blue identical bits. Calculate the probability that a girl takes away two red beads, one after the other from the box. So, from the question, we are aware that it contains red. How many red? Five red. Then, green. Three green. And four blue. So, right so now in this case we're going to first get the sum of number space that's the total number of outcomes is that not we call the sum of number space then we said sum of number space or total outcome will be five plus three plus four and this will be Five, five plus three is eight, and eight plus four is twelve. So it's equals to twelve, right? So the next thing is to calculate the probability that the girl take away two red bits. So our point of focus is this red bit. Remember, it's two. So she picked the first one, and she picked this one. And remember, n in probability represent multiplication. If, for example, there are 12 bits inside this container, there are 12 bits here, and she picked the first one. Remember, there are five of the red. She picked the first one, so out of these 12, there are five red ones. So, if she picked this first one, you know, the sum of number space will reduce to 11, and the number of red will also reduce from 5 to Four. Are we there? So the first probability is going to be five over twelve. Then the second one she picked is going to be what four over eleven because the number of red have reduced, leading to the reduction of the total number of outcome. The probability of picking red and the second one too will be the probability of Picking another red. That's it. Probability of taking red and the probability of taking red. The first one is red, the second one is red. So the first one, of course, we know that probability, the formula for calculating probability is what? Probability is equals to number of outcome over total number of total number of outcome. Now, in this case, the probability of picking red will be 5 over the total number of outcome, which is what? 12 over 12. Then, and in probability is multiplication. So, times the second, the probability of picking the second one is not going to be 5, as we said. It's going to be 4 because one has already been picked, the red one. 4 over. And the number of Total number of outcome now, or the total number of bits, is going to reduce. Is that not it's going to reduce from 12 to 11? So, 11. so this is what we have. So, in this case, we're going to have 4 here, 
is 1, 4 here is 3. So we'll be having 5 times 1 over 3 times 11. So this is going to be equals to 5 times 1 is 5 over 3 times 11 is 33. So this is the probability of taking two red bits one after the other. The question may come in different form. It may come in the form of these bits are picked one after the other without replacement. If it is without replacement, of course, this is the same thing with this. But if it is with replacement, that means the bit was picked and returned. So this second one is not going to be the same. This is it. Let's move to the next question. All right, question 6a. The question says, in a class of 80 students, 3 over 4 study biology and 3 over 5 study physics. If each student studies at least one of the subjects, we should first draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. Secondly, how many students study both subjects? And lastly, find the fraction of the class that study biology but not physics. So, in this case now, this question wants us to do a little calculation before we draw the Venn diagram. Why? Because in the class there are 80 students, but 3 over 4 of these 80 students study biology, then 3 over 5 of these 80 students study physics. So, of course, this is very simple for us to manipulate. I'm going to say, so we're going to say total number of students. It's what? 80, right? Then we have those ones that study biology. First is 3 over 4 of the 80 students. So say biology will be 3 over 4 of 80. So 3 over 4 we have of 80, which will be what? Which will be same thing as 3 over 4 times 80. So over 1, we can balance it with 1. So this one is going to be use our calculator 4 into 80, that's 80 divided by 4. It's 20. So 4 here is 1, 4 here is 20. So we're left with 3 times 20. And 3 times 20 is what? 60 right so this is equal to 60 students so 60 students study biology right then next one is is 3 over 5 study physics right so 3 over 5 is 3 over 5 of 80 so we're going to use the same method it's going to be what 3 over 5 times 80, right? So 80 divided by 5. So 80 divided by 5 is 16, right? So this one over 1. 5 here is 1. 5 here is 16. So we are left with what? 3 times 16. So 3 times 16 is what? 48 right so we have 48 so now we have this so it's now time for us to answer the question proper the first question we are to draw a Venn diagram to present the information so so doing the right diagram does so now number i it's a Venn diagram right So we have this, and remember we have physics and biology. So there will be two cycles. So this will be physics. And this will be biology. Right? Remember we have the universal set. 
or the total number of students right we also call it the universal set as what u so it's equals to what it's equals to 80. so there are 80 students in the class so now in this case we are aware that from the question there are some that study biology there's some that study physics and there are some that study both physics and biology so we're going to use x to represent students that study both physics and biology so let x equals to students who study physics and biology so that means this place is going to be x because this is where students that study physics and biology are meeting right then for those who that study biology only remember that we have this 60 but that doesn't mean 60 is the students that study only biology there are students that study both physics and biology in this so how are we going to do we're going to subtract it right we're going to say 60 minus the x if you remove the number of students that study both physics both biology and physics you're going to get the students that study biology only so the same thing with physics you carry this 48 subtract those, those students that study both physics and biology uh, 48 minus x right so this is the venn diagram we're done with question i so let's move to the next question the next question is says how many students study both physics and biology how many students study both subjects so so i i so those that study both physics and biology let's see so we're going to add all of them here all these ones after adding them then we equate it to the number of students that's 80 right so we're going to say 60 the study here we say study both subjects both subject so we're going to say we have 60 minus x then plus the x at the center then plus 48 minus x equality to 80 so now we're going to find x if we find x remember we're going to find number of students that study for the subject so, so so we know that this minus x plus x this one will go right we are left with 60 plus 48 minus x is equals to 80 60 plus 48 is 108 right so of 108 minus x is equals to 80. So collect items. Huh? By the time you collect items, you know that this is going to be x is equals to 108 minus 80. So 108 minus 80 or minus 80 is equals to 28. So the number of students that study both subjects is 28 so x is equals to 28 so these are the number this is the number of students that study both physics and biology so this is actually the x that we're looking for right so let's move to the next question the next question says we should find the fraction of the class that study biology but not physics those that study biology but not physics. So study it. We say study it. Biology. But not physics. So how are we going to do? Remember that from our question on those that study biology purely without physics from the Venn diagram is actually 60 minus x if it was students that study both biology and physics together we're going to say okay 60 because among those these 60 students there are some that study physics so we want to get those who that study those students that study 
study biology purely we're going to say 60 minus x so of course we've already gotten our x but let's go it's going to be 60 minus x and it's a fraction right a fraction a fraction of the class that study biology not physics so remember this place is fraction so over the total number of students in the class that's 80 because that's a fraction so this one is going to be 60 minus what is our x our x is 28 right so we're going to say 28 over 80 so 60 minus 28 60 minus 28 is 32 so we're going to have equal to 32 over 80 so 32 divided by 80 2 here is 16 and 2 here is 40 2 here is 8 and 2 here is 20 2 here is 4 and 2 here is 10 then we have 2 here is 2 and 2 here is 5 right so the fraction is what 2 over 5 reducing it to the nearest the lowest term right so that's the fraction of a student that study biology and not but not physics so that's the answer to our question so i think that's all for the question let's move to the next question all right question 6b the question says johnson and jokato limited sorry if i pronounce it wrong on a business office with flow measuring 15 by 8 meters which was to be carpeted the cost of carpeting was 890 ghana cities per square meter if a total of 216,120 ghana cities was spent on painting and carpeting how much was the cost of painting so in this case we are given the cost of both painting and carpeting as this we are going to calculate the amount for carpeting then we subtract it from the major amount then we get the remaining one will be for painting and remember that for the carpeting 890 Ghana cities is the cost per square meter so we're going to use this amount to calculate for that of 15 by 8 meters which will help us to um, get the total amount after getting the total amount we subtract from the main amount which comprises of both carpeting and painting so we're going to say cost of one square meter eight hundred and ninety Ghana cities right then the painting and carpet is equals to one hundred and sixteen thousand one hundred and twenty Ghana cities so this is it so how are we going to calculate the amount for carpeting 15 by 8 meters is very very easy so since one square meter costs this then if you multiply this by by this measurement you want to get the total amount for carpeting 15 by 8 flow right so it's so a total amount for carpeting Will be equals to this 15 by 8 that's the same, another way of writing by then we multiply it by this right 890 so if we multiply this we're going to get the total amount for capital so let's use our calculator 15 times 8 times 890 it's actually 106,800 that's the amount for carpeting this so we're going to say this is equal to Ghana so 
So this is the amount for what? The total amount for carpeting. So the next thing is to get the cost of painting. So, uh, in the cost of painting, we're going to say cost of painting is equal to the total amount minus the cost of carpeting, right? So we will get the cost of painting. So say cost of painting is equals to total amount minus cost of carpeting. So if we do that, this is going to be what is the cost of painting? What is the cost of total amount? The total amount from the question is 216,120 minus the cost of capital we've calculated to be 106 plus 106,800 right so if we subtract this what are we going to have so the un the answer is 109,320 Ghana cities Ghana cities, 109,320. This is actually the cost of painting, right? So the first thing to do is calculate the cost of carpeting, subtract from the total amount, then you will get the cost of painting. Simple. Let's move to the next question. All right, question 7a. The question says copy and complete the table of values for the relation y is equal to x squared minus x minus 2 4 minus 4 is less or equals to x and less or equals to 4 so now in this case we are going to actually substitute these values into this equation some have been done for us you can see so now we're going to follow what is already in the table remember that is from minus 4 that means minus 4 is equal because it's less or equal to right so from minus 4 to plus 4 now we have these ones have already been done so we're going to solve the minus. so wherever we see x we'll be putting these values right we'll put in these values wherever we see x so that we'll be able to get the value of y so in this so the first one is when x is equal to minus 4. So say x is equal to minus 4. So when x equals to minus 4, remember we have y is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 2. So wherever we see x, we'll put minus 4, right? So now this one will be y is equal to 2 into minus 4 squared minus part of i. At least our x, our x is minus 4, minus 2. So this is going to be 2 into minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. Minus minus is plus, right? Then we have 4, we have minus 2. So the next one is going to be 2 times 16 is 32. plus 4 minus 2 so 32 plus 4 is 36 and 36 minus 2 is 34 so this is 34 so this place is 34 next one is when x is equal to minus 2 right x equals to minus 2 so let's go it's going to be y is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 2. So this one is going to be 2 into minus 2 squared minus into minus 2 then minus 2. Right? Substituting. This is going to be 2 into 2 squared is 4. Because anything, the square of any negative value will always be positive. 
that's why minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4 not minus 4 so minus minus is plus 2 then we have minus 2 so 2 times 4 is 8 8 plus 2 is 10 and 10 minus 2 is 8 so this is equal to 8 right so this place is 8 then the next one is when x is minus 1 x is equal to minus 1 so we have y is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 2 which will be equal to 2 into minus 1 squared minus into minus 1 minus 2 right so this is going to be 2 minus 1 times minus 1 is 1 then we have minus minus is plus 1 minus 2 then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 minus 2 so 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 minus 2 is 1 so it's equals to 1 so the answer here is 1 right next one is when x is 1 x is equals to 1 so in this case we're going to say y is equals to 2x squared minus x minus 2 so this is equals to 2 into 9 is 1 minus 1 now minus 2 so this is going to be 2 1 times 1 that's 1 square is 1 so 1 minus 1 minus 2 so this is going to be 2 minus 1 minus 2 so 2 minus 1 is 1 and 1 minus 2 is minus 1 so this is equals to minus 1 so next is when x is equal to 2 so we have y is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 2 so it's going to be equals to 2 into now 2 square minus 2 minus 2 right let's continue it here you're going to be 2 square is 4 so 2 into 4 minus 2 minus 2 so this is 2 times 4 is 8 minus 2 minus 2 so 8 minus 2 is 6 and 6 minus 2 is 4 so this equals to 4 So this place is equals to 4. Next one x is equals to 3. Now we have y is equals to 2x s bar 2 minus x minus 2. So this is going to be 2 into 3 raised to power 2 minus 3 minus 2. So it's going to be 2 raised to power 3 times 3 is 9. This is not the same thing as 3 times 2, but it's 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 in 2 places, minus 3, minus 2. So, 2 times 9 is 18. So, it's going to be 18, minus 3, minus 2. So, 18 minus 3 is equal to 15. And 15 minus 2 is equal to 13. So, this is 13. So, this place is 13. Because the question says we should copy and complete the table of values and we've done that so let's see the sub questions under this question of course we know that there are always questions under such kind of question so let's see all right question 7b the question says using a scale of two centimeters to one unit on x-axis and two centimeters to five units on y axis draw the graph of y is equals to x squared minus x minus two four for the value of x ranging from minus four to plus four so we have already solved this equation right so it's now time for us to draw the graph and in drawing the graph we have been given the scale this is for x axis and this is for y axis 
and this is fine tell us that in every two centimeters we're going to write one unit on x axis so let's go back to the graph so this is my graph one thing you should note here is that the graph are always into different form but this my graph is already in two centimeters so i don't need to add more more of the square it's already it's already in two centimeters so since it is already in two centimeters now for every box now is two centimeters and on the x-axis the question says two centimeters to present one unit so since we said already these boxes are in two centimeters on x-axis now which is the horizontal axis we're going to write each of the box will represent one unit because this box is already in two centimeters so we're going to draw the horizontal and the vertical line first now we we'll look for a suitable place calculate it to know the highest value and the lowest value it will determine where you will draw the line so we we'll draw it up here so and at our highest and the lowest point on both the y's y and the x axis as you know that the x axis is a horizontal line so the highest value on the x axis is plus four and the lowest value is minus four and remember we said that each of these box is two centimeters and the scale we're giving in the question is two centimeters present one unit on the x axis so we're going to draw the line here and this will be our this is our x axis then our axis now so this is our x axis this is our x axis and this is our y axis so writing the the scale now using the scale this is zero of course we know that this is already in two two centimeters as we said so this one is going to be one unit one this one will be two this one will be three four five six seven and so on then here will be negative one will be negative one negative two negative three negative four negative five negative six and so on then on the y axis we are to use two centimeters to represent five units and already as we said these boxes are already in two centimeters so we're just going to represent five units on each of the box so in every box we're going to write five five units so we're going to be adding five so this one the first one will be five the second one will be plus five will be ten then we have 15 20 25 30 35 and so on then here we have minus 5 minus 10 minus 15 so this is our axis right so it's now time for us to start bringing out the points then the next thing to note is these small boxes these small boxes they have a special use because whenever you are trying to trace a point and that point is not on a bold line we will have to make use of these small boxes so how are we going to know the value of these small boxes is actually very simple for the y axis pick up the first value which is 5 divide it by the number of boxes and each box is contain 10 of them right so we're going to say 5 divided by 10 5 divided by 10 is 0 0.5 so each small box on the y axis is 0 0.5 then the same thing on the x axis we want to know the value of the small boxes pick the first value that's one divided by number of boxes which is 10 so one divided by 10 of course is 0 0.1 so each of the small box on the x axis is 0 0.1 so bear it in mind because we're going to use it later on so let's start when 
x is minus 4 y is 34 so where is minus 4 our minus 4 is here when x is minus 4 a is minus 4 y is 34 so 34 will be above 30 right this is 30 so 34 will be above 30 so how many boxes are we going to actually count to make it 34 so that we add it to this 30 to make it 34 you know that each small box on the y axis is 0 0.5 the first box above 30 is 30.5 then the second one will be 31 because we'll be adding 0 0.5, right? Then the third one will be 31.5 continuously. So now the easiest way to do this is to we have 0 0.5. So it's actually going to be 8 boxes above 30 because 8 boxes, if you multiply 0 0.5 times 8, it's going to give you 4. Right, and 4 plus the 30 is going to give us 34. So, 8 boxes above 30, which is actually here. Right, so we're going to look at where they're going to meet with the minus 4. So, they are going to actually meet here. So, the next one is when x is minus 3, y is 19. So, where is minus 3? Of course, on x axis is minus 3, right? Then y is, is 19. So where is 19? Of course, 19 will be above this 15, close to 20. So it's going to be actually two boxes below 20. Two boxes below 20. So two boxes below 20 because each of the boxes we say is 0 0.5. So two boxes below 20 is here. So where are they going to meet with minus 3? They are going to meet here. Next is when x is minus 2, y is 8. So where is minus 2? This is minus 2. And y is 8. And minus 8 is 4 boxes below 10. 4 boxes below 10. So it's going to be here. So where are they going to meet with minus 2? Of course, they are going to meet here. Can you see? The next one is when x is minus 1, y is 1. So, when x is minus 1, a is minus 1, y is 1. So, 1 is actually 2 boxes above 0. Because the first box is 0 0.5, the second box is 1. So, it's here. This is 1. And the y axis. And where they're going to meet with minus one, they're going to meet here. So the next one is when x is zero, y is minus two. When x is zero, y is minus two. So x is zero, y is now minus two. So minus two, of course, will be four boxes below zero minus two. Because the first one is minus zero point five, second one minus one x1 minus 1.5 then the fourth one minus 2 so four, four boxes below 0 which is here so where are they going to meet in the 0 0 already is on the line so they're going to meet here okay the next one is when x is 1 y is minus 1 so when x is 1 y is minus 1 so x is 1 this is 1 y is minus 1 of course the minus 1 is the same thing as Two boxes below zero. Two boxes below zero because the first one is zero point five, the second one one. So it's here, and they are going to meet with the one here. The next one is when x is two, y is four. When x is two, y is four. So when x is two, y is four. Four is actually two boxes below five. Two boxes below five, which is here. I want to meet with two here. Next one is when x is three, y is thirteen. When x is three, this three, y is 
13 so 13 should be above 10 but below 15 so that means we have four boxes below 15 so this here and they are going to meet with three here the next one is when x is 4 y is 26 when x is 4 this is 4 y is 26 26 is actually above 25 two boxes above 25 because if you add 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is going to give you 1 so 1 plus the 25 here is going to be 26 so two boxes above 25 and where are you going to meet with the 4 they are going to actually meet here so these are our points now it's left for us to draw a line that will touch all the points so preferably i will use ruler for some side then i will use freehand so that my for the cuff wherever it is cuff so that the work will be neat so So this is our graph. It's given on a curve. Of course, this is how quadratic graph looks, right? Whenever you have a quadratic graph, it always have a curve. So this is our graph. Let's move to the next question. Let's see the other question under it. All right. Question seven C says on the same axis, draw the graph of y equals to two x plus three. So now this is a linear equation of course this is a linear equation but in this case we have to solve for the value of x so that we will be able to draw the graph so let's solve for the value of x in what y is equals to 2x plus 3 so, so now we're going to solve it for y is equals to 2x plus 3 right from the question i'm going to use the same uh, value for x from minus 4 to plus 4 so we are x we are minus 4 is less or equals to x less or equals to 4 right so in this case we're going to say when x is equals to minus 4 right when x equals to minus 4 we're going to have y is equals to 2 into minus 4 plus 3 so this is y is equals to 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 plus 3. And this is minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5. Right? Then we have when x is equal to minus 3. So this one is going to be y is equal to 2 into minus 3 plus 3, which is 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus 3, which will be minus 3, because minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3. Then when x is equal to minus 2, we're going to have y is equal to 2 into minus 2 plus 3. And this will be minus 4 plus 3, which is minus 1. Then when x is equal to minus 1, it's going to be y is equal to 2 into minus 1 plus 3 so this is going to be minus 2 plus 3 right which will be minus 2 plus 3 is 1 next is when x is equals to 0 right will be y is equal to 2 into 0 plus 3 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is equals to plus 3 or it's equals to 3 right next one is when x is equals to 1 so we're going to have y is equals to 2 into 1 plus 3 we're going to be 2 plus 3 which is 5 next one is when x is equals to 2 it's going to be y is equals to 2 into 2 plus 3 
which will be 4 plus 3 is 7. Next is when x is equal to 3. We have y is equal to 2 into 3 plus 3, right? y is going to be 6 plus 3. And this is 9. Then finally, for 4, right? When x is equal to 4, we're going to have y is equal to 2 into 4 plus 3. And this is 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3 is 11. So now our table will have a new table for this, which will be like this. So this one here will be when x is minus 4 is minus 5 minus 3 minus 1 1 3 5 7 9 and 11. So this is our new table for the next plotting. So now from what we've calculated now we're going to plot the other one because the question says we, we should use the same axis to draw this this one and we've calculated it and we have the table here already so let's see when x is minus 4 y is minus 5 so when x is minus 4 y is minus 5 so so let's see minus when x is minus 4 where is our minus 4? Our minus 4 is here. And um, y is minus 5. So minus 5 is here for y. So where are they going to meet? They are going to meet here. So when x is minus 3, y is minus 3 also. So when x is minus 3, y is minus 3. So where is x? x is minus 3 is here and y is minus 3 how are we going to get minus 3 minus 3 is actually 6 boxes below 0 going to be here and where are they going to meet minus 3 right so this is minus 3 and minus 3 is here next one is when x and x is minus 2 y is minus 1 so x is minus 2 y is minus 1 so x is minus 2, y is minus 1. So minus 1 is 2 boxes below 0, which is here. So they are going to meet here. Next one is when x is minus 1, y is 1. x is minus 1, y is 1. So x is minus 1, which is here. y is 1 so 1 is 2 boxes above 0 which is here so they are going to meet here so the next one is when x is 0 y is 3 x is 0 y is 3 so 3 is 6 boxes above 0 see so is 0 remember so it's going to be here next is when x is 1 y is 5 when x is 1, y is 5. So when x is 1, which is here, y is 5, which is here. So of course they are going to meet here. Of course they are going to meet here. Right? Next one is when x is 2, y is 7. When x is 2, when x is 2, yeah, y is 7. And 7 is 2. Is 4 boxes above 5 is 7. And they are going to meet here. The next one is when x is 3, y is 9. When x is 3, y is 9. So this x is 3. No, 9 is 2 boxes below 10. Which is here. So they are going to meet here. Lastly is when x is 4, y is 11. 
when x is 4, which is here, y is 11, which is 2 boxes above 10. So they want to meet here. It's here, they want to meet here. So if you will notice, it's going to give us a straight line graph. So use your ruler to draw and join the lines. So use your ruler, trace the line. So this is it. Can you see? We are able to get the two graphs. The first one is a straight line graph, while the other one is a quadratic graph. So from our question on this graph here, is a graph of 2x squared minus x minus 2, right? 2x squared minus x minus 2, that's for this. Then the other one is for y is equals to 2x plus 3. So this one is going to be graph of 2x plus 3. So these are the two equations right the graph of the two equations so let's move to the next question that's d the d part of the question says using the graph to find the roots of 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 now in this case now this one thing you should know we have to use this existing graph to solve for this equation and if you can check if you check it this equation is different from this one that we plotted earlier on so how are we going to do about it? We have to use this existing graph to find the root of the equation of this equation. So in this case, what we should do here is, that, is to compare the two equations, this one here and this one here, and find the difference, then we will know how to handle that. So in this case, let's go back to the board. So of course, the first equation is 2x squared minus x minus 2, right? So set so 2x squared minus x minus 2. That is the equation. This equation we've already plotted. We've already plotted the graph for this. So now we have to use the graph of this equation to solve for the equation of 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So we have 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 so now what's the difference not that if you would if you would check the equation this x these 2x and 2x are the same so we don't need to work on any of that but if you check from minus from minus x here has if you check this one here is minus x or this one is minus 3 that means it's difference right so from minus x that's minus 1 to minus 3x is a difference of what minus 2x why by the time you carry 3 minus 1 you're going to get 2 right so since it's negative minus 2x then if you check minus 2 and minus 5 are different so what's the difference between minus 2 and minus 5 the difference between minus 2 and minus 5 is minus 3 can you see so this difference that we have now it will help us to get the new Equation. So in this case, we're going to say now it's going to be this one here is 2x square minus x minus 2. Now equate it to this. This one now will move to the other side of the equation. And once they move to the other side of the equation, we know that we're going to have instead of minus 2x, it's going to be 2x. Then this one instead of minus 3, it's going to be plus 3. I see so indirectly they are trying to tell us the question is trying to tell us that this equation is y is equal to 2x plus 3 this one here y is equal to 2x plus 3 so since it is y equals to 2x plus 3 we are focusing on this so this 2y 2x plus 3 is the same thing if you check our question if we check our question, it's the same equation as the one we have solved here. Can you see? It's very easy. So, if you don't have the knowledge of getting this, you would think like this equation is different from this, but it's the same thing. If you would check and compare the difference, you will get this equation, which is the same thing as the one 
the straight line we've drawn in the graph. So that means we're going to make use of this one we have calculated, we've drawn, and this equation we've drawn to get the root of this entire equation. So in this case, let's go back to the graph. So I'm back on the graph. In order to get the root of this equation, we are going to look for the point where this line cut across this line, which is this on the graph. And we're going to trace it down to the x axis and we will get those roots. So now you can see where they meet here. See where they meet here. Here and here. So you trace it down. So use a ruler. And this here, where the line cut across each other, draw it down. So the next thing is, what is the point here, and what is the point here? If you get the point here, that will be the root of those equation. So now, if you will check, we are aware that on the x-axis, each of the small box is 0 0.1. So we have two here. Count the number of boxes to those place. We have one, two, three, four, five. So this is two point five. Right? This is two point five. That's the point. That's the first equation. That's the first root. And the second root here is actually minus one directly. So it's minus one. So this are the root. Remember that drawing this that line, dotted line, is very, very important. It is very, very important. So that is actually the root of this equation. The roots are minus 1 and 2.5. The root of the equation, 2x minus 3x minus 5. Let's see. 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is equals what? What are the equations? The roots are minus 1 or 2.5. That is our number 7di. 7di. Then let's go to the next question. That's number 7dii. Let's see number 7dii. Number 7 DII, the question says we should find the range of values of x for which 2x minus 2x squared minus x minus 2 is less than 0. So, how am I going to go about this? So, in order to get the range now, we're going to take the lowest value on the y axis, and the lowest value is minus 2. If you check, which is also from here. So now since the mi minus 2 is the lowest value and we don't know the highest value here because the graph will keep on moving whenever you keep on plotting it will move to positive infinity then we're going to say the range of this value is r this is the range into from the negative 2 to positive infinity so this is the range of these values. So I think that's the end of the question. Let's move to the next one. All right, question 8A. The question says in triangle PQR, angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees. If its area is 216 centimeters square and line PQ ratio QR is 3 to ratio 4. We have to find PR, right? Find line PR. So the first thing to note here is we have a right angle triangle from the question. So let's draw it. So this is a right angle triangle. So in this we have P, Q, and R. And we from the question we have the area is equals to 216 centimeter square 
and the question continues the same. And from the question again, we know that line PQ to ratio line QR is equal to what is sentence as three to ratio four. Of course, we know that ratio is something as division, right? So indirectly, the question is trying to tell us that we are going to make it like this: PQ line PQ something as saying line PQ over line QR because that's something as ratio, right? PQ line PQ to ratio line QR is equals to three to ratio four. That's the meaning. So when we have this, it's very easy for us to make one of them the subject formula. So we can make line PQ the subject formula or QR. So making the subject formula, we cross multiply, of course. If we cross multiply, we're going to have four line PQ is equal to three line QR, right? We cross multiply. This will multiply by this and this will multiply by this. So in this case we have and um, we say we are going to make one of them the subject formula. Let's make PQ the subject formula. So in order to make PQ the subject formula, we divide both sides by four. That's the coefficient of PQ. So divide both sides by four by four. This cancel this, right? So we have that line PQ is equal to three over four line QR. So we have this. So in this case now we've gotten line PQ. But that doesn't mean we are getting PR anytime soon. So the next thing to do here is to substitute into the formula of the area of a triangle. So what is the formula for finding the area of a triangle? Is given as area is equal to half half base times height, right? So that's the area, that's the formula for finding the area of a triangle. So now what is the base? The base is actually line QR, right? That's the base. And what is the height? The height is line QP. Can you see? So we know that the base in this case, the base, you can write it here, our base is something as line QR. And our height now is something as line PQ, right? Or QP. So we have this. And if we have this, let's substitute it in the equation. You know that the area has been given, right? The area has been given as 216 centimeters square. So we're going to say, we're going to say substituting. You substitute we're going to have the area instead of area we write 216 is equals to 1 over 2 times the base now what is the base line qr qr right line qr then we have times what is the height we've gotten our height which is pq here can you see line pq so we're going to substitute it here it's going to be 3 over 4 line QR. Close the bracket. So this is what we have now. So in this case, so this one we can write it in this form 216 is equal to 1 over 2 into line QR balances with 1 times 3 over 4 times line QR balances with 1 and close the bracket. The same thing as saying something like this. So this will be the same thing as 216 is equals to 1 over 2. Then 
this numerator will multiply by each other, all the numerators. So we're going to have QR times 3 times QR. Of course, it's going to be 3 line QR square. Can you see? Over 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. Then close the bracket. We have this. If we have this, the same thing as opening this up. Same time as opening this up is going to be 216 is equal to 1 times the numerator here is going to be same thing as 3 line line QR square over 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 8 here. Then balance this one with 1. Cross multiply. Right? So if we cross multiply now, this will multiply by this, and this one here will multiply by 1. So we're going to have 3 line QR square is equal to 216 times 8. So let's multiply it. So we're going to say 216 times 8. Is 1728, right? So we're going to have three line QR square is equal to 1728. So we are looking for line QR in this case. I'm going to divide both sides by three. So divide both sides by three, right? So if you divide both sides by 3, this one will divide by this, this divide by this. So 3 here is 1, we are left with line QR square is equal to 1,728 divided by 3. So divide by 3 is 576. So 576. So we're looking for QR, not QR square. So we take square of both sides. So take the square of both sides. So this two, we cancel this square. Then what's the square of 576? So we're going to say line QR is equal to the square of 576. The square root of 576 is 24. So it's equal to 24 centimeters. So we have gotten our line QR, right? So we'll go back to the case, go back to our diagram. So we'll say line QR is this is 24 centimeters. So the next thing is to get our line PQ because getting line PQ will help us get our PR. So line PQ. So now how can we get our line PQ? Because if we don't get our line PQ, we will not be able to get our line PR. So how are we going to get our line PQ? In order for us to get our line PQ, remember that our line PQ is this. Right, and we have gotten our QR now. So we're going to say, so say for line PQ now, I'll write it here. So we're going to say, so remember, we say remember line PQ is equal to 3 over 4. Line QR. So this is going to be our line PQ is equal to 3 over 4 times what is our QR? Line QR will calculate to be 24, right? So time is 24. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. So 4 here is 1, 4 here is 6. So our line PQ 
is equal to 3 times 6 and 3 times 6 is 18 centimeters so that's our line pq so we'll go back and write it so line pq is 18 centimeters so if this less is 18 and this less is 24 of course it will be very very easy to calculate our line pr because the question says we should calculate line pr well, how using Pythagoras rule right of course the Pythagoras rule is mainly for right angles to triangle so what is the Pythagoras rule so now let's calculate our line pr so we said using Pythagoras so for line pr so i'm going to say using Pythagoras right So by the time you use Pythagoras, which says the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the opposite plus the square plus the square of the adjacent. So now what is our hypotenuse? Of course, our hypotenuse from the question, of course, from the question, our hypotenuse is line PR, right? So we're going to say line PR is equal to our opposite is line PQ and our adjacent is line QR so so the hypotenuse is line PR square is equal to our opposite which is 18 square plus our adjacent which is 24 square so this is going to be line PR square is equal to 18 square so 18 square is 324 Plus 24 square is 576. 576. So by the time we add these two, we're going to have the plus 324 is equal to 900. So we're going to say line PR square is equal to 900. So take the square of both sides of both sides. So if you take the square of both sides, these two will cancel this square. So we have line PR is equal to what's the square of 900? Is 30 so this 30 centimeters so that is our line PR so so that means this is 30 centimeters of course we have now answered the question so let's move to the so question 8b the question says the present ages of a man and his son are 47 years and 17 years respectively in how many years would the man age be twice that of his son? So now we know that the father's age or the man's age, man's age is 47 years and the son's age is what is 17 years. right so now the question is asking us in how many years time will the age of the father be twice that of the son I mean they, so now we don't know in how many years so we say let the years be x so let years be x so in x years to come the father will be twice the age of the son is that not? so we now say in x years right because the years is x so we say in x years in x years time so now in this x years time now we are going to add this x to all their existing age so that we will get the ages in that year right so we're going to say in this x year man's age now will be the man's age will be equals to 47 plus x and the son's age 
will be 17 plus x so that's in x years time right so remember the question said that in what year will the father's age be twice the son so the father's age and i won't say the father's age in that year x years so that's 47 plus x will be same as twice that of his son 17 plus x that's the statement so in this case we have 47 plus x is equals to open this bracket we're going to say 2 times 17 is 34 then we have 2 times x because this one is going to multiply this 2 times x is going to be 2x or plus 2x so collect light terms if you collect light terms now this one and this will move together because they are numbers. Then with this S and this S will move together. So we're going to have 47. This one now will move and make this and it will become subtraction with minus 34 is equal to 2x. This one too will move to the other side with minus x minus x. So 47 minus 34. 47 minus 34. Is 13 so we're going to have 13 is equals to 2 minus x 2x minus x is x so therefore x is equals to 13 years so in 13 years time the father's age will be twice that of his son so that is how to solve it let's move to the next question all right question nine the question says in the diagram pqrs is a trapezium with line qr parallel to line ps this is line qr of course is parallel to line ps which is a u and t are point on ps right this is u and t are a point from what ps all the way to this such that PU is 5 centimeters, it's written here. QR is 12 centimeters, can you see it? Which is from here to here. And angle PUQ is equal to angle STR, which is 90 degrees, which is here. The angle here and the angle here are the same, right? If the area of triangle PQR, where is PQR? This is P, Q, from P to Q R this triangle. If the area of this triangle is 20 centimeters square, we have to call, calculate correct to the nearest whole number, the perimeter, and the area of the trapezium. So now the first thing to note here that it is going to be difficult to calculate the perimeter of any shape if you don't have all the the value of all the sides so from the question we don't have from here to here we don't also have from here to here we don't have from u to s and we don't have it so how are we going to do so we have to know the all these sides in order to calculate the perimeter so the first thing to do is to check which side would be easier to be calculated based on what we have on ground yeah it's very easy for us to to calculate from here to here because we have these five here yeah, and these 12 so it's easy for us to get line p q so in that case let's calculate line p q let me put a diagram here so this is a diagram and um, we know that this one here so we have 12 centimeters and 5 centimeters here and this is PQRS P Q R S right 
then we have ut u and t so now as we said the first thing we're going to do is to calculate this angle this side here of course it's very easy for us to calculate this because this is a right angle this side here from here to here can you see this is a right angle so in calculating the right angle we can use the Pythagoras rule so we can say for line what pq right we're going to use use Pythagoras, right? We're going to use Pythagoras theory, which says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent. So what is a hypotenuse? A hypotenuse is now the x we're looking for. So it's going to be x x squared is equal to the opposite which is our 12 here this time 12 square plus our adjacent which is 5 centimeters so 5 square so x square is equal to 12 square is 144 plus 5 square is 25 so this one is going to be x square is equal to 144 plus 25 is equal to 169 so we are going to take the square of both sides this will cancel this right we have x now is equal to what the square of 169 is actually 13 centimeters this is 13 centimeters so we've gotten our x our x here is 13 centimeters so if we've gotten this place as 13 centimeters we are going to get next of course if we'll check it this is a triangle from here this is actually a triangle but not that from the question that the area of PQR is 20 centimeters and these are PQR. Can you see that the area is 20 centimeters square? So that means this triangle in red, the area has been calculated. So let's get it out. So we have something like this. We know that this side is 13 centimeters. And this one is P here, this is Q here, right? And this is R. So the area here has been given as what? As 20 centimeters square. Square. Crazy. So now how are we going to get this QR? Because if we get this QR here, is the same thing as this QR here and it will be the same thing as this UT because they are the same it's a trapezium so now we're going to use the formula for finding the area of a triangle which is given as area is equal to 1 over 2 base times height so in this case we have the area we have the base because this is actually the base this will serve as the base but we don't have the height the height is from here to here so now we are going to substitute if you substitute now say substitute we're going to have what is our area our area has been calculated has been given as 20 centimeters square so we say 20 is equals to 1 over 2 times what is the base the base is now 13 centimeters Set so 13 times the height, we don't know which is what QR. That line here, so we said line QR. Is that not? So balance this one with 1, 1, and 1. So this one is going to be 20 is equal to 1 times 13 times line QR is going to be 13 line QR over 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. So balance it one with one. We're going to have is equals to. If by time you cross multiply this, this one multiply this and this one multiply by this, we're going to have twenty times two, right? So it will be thirteen line QR is equals to twenty times two. So 
Now we are looking for we have 13 line QR is equal to 20 times 2 is 40. Right? We're looking for line QR, so we divide both sides by 13. So we say divide both side by 13. So this one will be 13 here. 13 here. So 13 cancel 13. We have our line QR equals to 40 divided by 13. Is 3.07, right? Which is approximately 3.1. So this is 3.1 centimeters. So we've calculated our line QR. So our line QR here is what? 3.1. So three. This is 3.1 meters, centimeters, right? So it's same thing as 3.1 centimeters. Here. So that means this our UT will be. 3.1 centimeters because they are equal so what's the next thing to do the next thing to do is to calculate this side if you can calculate this side from here to here or calculate this side from here to here if it is possible so another thing to point here is that this place is also 12 centimeters and from our question this is just 50 degrees here so we're going to say this place is also 50 degrees is 50 degrees so if this place is 50 degrees and this place is 12 centimeters it is possible for us to get either line rs uh, or line ts is very very easy using the trigonometric ratio so let's use the trigonometric ratio to get line rs and line ts right so of course we know that the trigonometry ratio we have a cheat called so ka tua where it means this means that sine the so means sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse then the cos the chi is cos is cos adjacent all over hypotenuse, right? And finally, the twa means tan is equal to opposite all over adjacent. So from here, we can make use of this trigonometric ratio to find both line RS and line TS. Now, which one we're going to start? It doesn't matter which one you start. Let's start with line RS. So line RS is known as the hypotenuse this will be the hypotenuse here, right this will be the adjacent and this will be the opposite so if that's the case we are going to make use of hypotenuse and opposite because the, we have opposite available so opposite and hypotenuse is sine so we're going to make use of sine 50 because the angle there is 50 so we're going to say sine 50 so that's for line RS. So when you say for line RS, we're going to use sine theta. Of course, sine is known as is equals to opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to be sine sine what? From the question, sine fifty, right? sine 50 is equal to what is our opposite we've calculated our opposite to be from here to here as 12 centimeters so equals to 12 over what is our hypotenuse of course our hypotenuse is our unknown so it's a line rs that's what we're looking for so this is same thing as over one here. Cross multiply. If we cross multiply like this, we're going to have that line RS sine 50 is equals to 
12 times 1 is 7 times 12. So the divide by 7 by what? Sine 50 because we are looking for RS. So if we divide by 7 by sine 50, sine 50, this sine 50 will cancel this sine 50. We are left with what? Line RS is equal to 12 over what is sine 50? Sine 50. Is 0 0.766 so 0 0.766 so 12 divided by 0 0.376 is so 12 divided by 0 0.766 of course is 15.7 so this is equal to 15.7 centimeters so this is our line RS. So let's go back to our diagram. 15.7. So this place is 15.7 centimeters. It's now time for us to calculate line TS. That's this place. So I'm going to calculate line TS. Of course, it's between the adjacent and the hypotenuse or the opposite. What it preferably use this because this is already in the question right so we're going to use adjacent and opposite and adjacent and opposite is tan right so we're going to use tan 50 in this case for ts so we're going to say for for line ts we're going to use tan theta is equals to opposite all over adjacent right and it will be tan 50 is equals to what is our opposite our opposite is 12 centimeters we have seen it from here to here right it is 12 centimeters we'll say 12 over adjacent which is our line t s so the same as cross multiply this we'll have that line t s tan 50 is equal to 12 right this will be what the bible side by tan 50 because we are looking for line t s so this tan 50 will cancel tan 50 we have line t s is equal to 12 over what is tan 50 It's 1.19, so it's 1.19, right? 12 divided by 1.19, say 12 by 1.19. Of course, it's 10.1, so it's close to 10.1 centimeters. So this is our line T S. So go back to the diagram. Line T S is 10.1. So with this now, we've gotten all our lines. So it's very possible for us to calculate the perimeter because the first question is for us to calculate the perimeter. So now we're going to say A. We're going to calculate only the boundaries from here, 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 and to here, right? Anything that's, that is inside, we don't need it. So, we're going to set our perimeter. It's going to be 13 plus 3.1 plus 15.7 plus 10.1 plus 3.1 and plus 5. That's what we're going to add. And if we add this one, so we are going to get our perimeter. So so we're going to say a the perimeter is going to be 13 this 13 plus this let's go from start from there 13 plus 3.1 plus this one 15.7 only the boundary 15.7 plus 
plus 3.1 and lastly plus 5 so let's add it we have 13 plus 3.1 plus 15.7 Plus 10.1 plus 3.1 plus 5. Of course, our perimeter is equal to 50 centimeters. So this is equal to 50 centimeters. That is the perimeter. So question B, 9B, is to calculate the area of the trapezium, right? So B, area of trapezium. And remember that area of the trapezium is given as area is equal to 1 over 2 into A plus B, H, where A is the what longest length and this is the longest length from p to s so we're going to add this this and this right so in this case we're going to have 5 plus 3.1 plus 10.1 and this is going to give us 5 plus 3.1 is 8.1 and 8.1 plus 10.1 is 18.2 so we're going to have 18.2 centimeters that's our A then B is the shortest length which is from here to here is 3.1 we'll say B is which is what 3.1 centimeters and lastly we have the H which is known as the height and the height is from here to here which is 12 centimeters right so if we follow that substitute in the into the equation or into the formula we're going to have area is equal to 1 over 2 into our a which is 18.2 plus our b which is 13.1 h which is what 12 right so let's deal with what is in the bracket 18.2 plus 13.1 is 21.3 right so it's 21.3 multiplied by 12 so this is going to be 1 over 2 open this up you're going to have 21.3 times 12. Let's multiply it. 21.3 times 12 is 255.6. So we have times 255.6. You can balance this one with one and divide it by two because this one is same as one times the whole of this is same thing as 255.6 divided by one times two is two and if we divide this divide two the answer is 127.8 and remember the question says in the nearest whole number so it's going to be 128 right we say area was 128 centimeter square. So that's it. Very simple and very tactical. Let's move to the next question. All right, question 10a. It says a cottage is on a bearing of 200 degrees. And 110 degrees from 
dog bears and manus farm respectively if dog bear walk five kilometers and manu three kilometers from the cottage to their farms find correct to i two significant figures the distance between the two farms i i the nearest degree the bearing of manu's farm from dog base farm now in this case one thing you should note is understanding the question is paramount if you don't understand the question you're going to end up doing the wrong thing knowing where to start is as well very good very very important so now the cottage is on the barrier of 200 degrees that's on dog base farm that's from dog base farm and the same cottage is 110 degrees from manu's farm so the first thing to do is to draw or is to draw 200 degrees on dog base farm it will give us the cottage right and the same thing we're going to do for that of manus farm but in this case it's going to be 110 degrees of course the first thing we are aware is to always draw the diagram so let's draw the diagram and see we're going to start with dog based farm so use your ruler draw the compass remember this is dog based farm they will write dog bay sorry if i pronounce it wrong This is dog bay, right? So, as we are aware, that is 200 degrees. The cottage is 200 degrees from this place. So, we're going to write 200 degrees. Now, from here, we know from here to here is 90. From here to here is another 90. That's 180 degrees. So, 200 degrees should be around here, right? So, in this case, we're going to write from here to here is 200 degrees. Use your ruler, draw a straight line. Remember, it's how many kilometers? If dog bear walk five kilometer, a man walk three kilometers from the cottage. So the distance between dog bear's farm and the cottage is five kilometers. So sometimes you can use your ruler, five kilometers, one centimeter to represent one kilometer. So that means we have five centimeters, right? Since one kilometer represents one centimeter, represents one kilometer, so you can measure it. The next thing is the next thing is to draw the cottage so this is the cottage right and this is five kilometers the next part of the question is that the same cottage is 110 degrees from Manu's farm. Now, on Manu's farm, we're going to draw 110 degrees, right? Of course, we know that the 10 degrees is going to be, Manu's farm is going to be here. But before you draw it, consider one thing. What you need to consider is this distance. Manu's farm from the cottage is 3 kilometers. That means Dogbe's farm is somehow far than the manus farm from the cottage so we're going to draw a shorter line compared to that of dog bay if you would draw it let's assume you have a compass like this if you draw it this is 90 degrees and this is 180 so 110 should be in between this place so that means it's going to stretch to the, towards this point so in this case we will know the position we're going to draw our compass our compass will be here around here remember it's shorter to the, the this one is shorter compared to the the dog base on so it's going to be around here remember it's three kilometers through the compass so join the cottage to manus farm with a straight line This is Manu, and this is 110 degrees, while this one is 
200 degrees right and the distance is all right three kilometers here right then let's join dog base farm to manu's farm use the ruler again so that's it right now the next thing to do is to calculate the various angle if possible now one thing you should get here is that from here all the way to here is 110 degrees right since this place is 110 degrees you can get this small angle or we can get this small one here since from here all the way to this place is 180 degrees so by the time we say 180 minus 110 the remaining will be this angle so let's use the calculator Seventy degrees. So this small place here is seventy degrees. This is seventy degrees. And if this place is seventy degrees, that means this place here is seventy degrees. Why? Because alternate angles are equal. So this is seventy degrees. Now if this place is seventy degrees, and remember that this is two hundred degrees. From here to here is ninety. Ninety. That's one eighty. 270 so by the time we said 270 minus 200 we're going to get from here to this place so 270 minus 200 is 70 degrees right so this place is 70 degrees right then the remaining one here or another way of doing it you can say that since from here to here is 180 degrees and you're looking for this small place we're going to say 200 minus 180 degrees so 200 minus 180 degrees this place is going to be 20 degrees this small place and if this place is 20 degrees of course this place is going to be 20 degrees so since this is 20 degrees the entire angle here is what 70 plus 20 which is 90 degrees so we're getting a right angle so this is actually a right angled triangle so with this let's solve the questions under this the first question we have here is to find the two significant figures the distance between the two farms so that means you're going to find this one here let's make it x but remember it's a right angle triangle and since it is a right angle triangle what should come to your mind is so we're going to have something like this where this place is a right angle right and if this place is a right angle the distance between this is dog bar let's make it let's make this one a b and c so this the distance here will be five kilometers this place will be three kilometers so this is it so when you have something like this of course the right angle triangle we are asked to find this place if you have to find this place this is actually simple using the Pythagoras rule so we're going to say using the Pythagoras rule that's question Pythagoras rule, right? We're going to say, what is the Pythagoras rule? The Pythagoras rule is the square of the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, is equal to the square of the adjacent plus the square of the opposite. So, what is our hypotenuse? Our hypotenuse, the longest side is now x, right? So, if this x now we're going to say x square is equal to what is our adjacent our adjacent is three so we're going to say three square plus our opposite is five square right so in this case we're going to say x square is equal to three square is nine plus five square is 25 right so we're going to have x square is equal to 9 plus 25 is 34 
So we're going to take square root of both sides. Writing in short. So if we take the square root of both sides, okay, this two will cancel this square root, right? We'll be left with only x. Is equal to what the square root of 34. Is 5.8. So we now have 5. 5.8. But remember, the question says the answer should be in the in two significant figures, right? So that's then that means we're going to stop here. So two that's 5.8 kilometers. 5.8 what kilometers? So that means this x here, the distance. Between Manus and Dogwe Swam is 5.8 kilometers. To the nearest degree, the bearing of Manus Farm from Dogbe Swam. So that means it is we're going to calculate it on dog base. The dog base farm will be our point of focus. So we're going to calculate from where is Dogbe Swam? This is Dogbe Farm. Uh that means we're going to calculate from here up to this place. Because this is the bearing. If you can calculate from all, if you can calculate from here all to this, that will be the bearing of Manus from dog base farm. But the question is, how are we going to do it? We already know that from here up to this place is 200, but we don't know this small angle. How are we going to do? The best thing to do, we are going to calculate the angles. After calculating the angles, then we will add it to the 200 degrees. Now, in order to calculate this angle here, which will be our theta, which is the same thing as here. So this one is our theta. So if this place is theta now, remember that if we are going to take this one, we're going to calculate this, this is going to be our adjacent, and this will be the opposite in this case, right? So what is the relationship between opposite and adjacent is tan that's a trigonometric ratio we're going to use tan in this case we want to use tan to get our theta so here we're going to use the other side so that's our i i right the equation says we should calculate the bearing of minus from dog based one and as we said we're going to calculate that small angle if you calculate the angle then we say we're going to use tan theta and tan theta is equals to opposite over adjacent, right? So what is our tan? What is our theta? We don't know. So it's going to be our opposite is now three kilometers, and our adjacent is five kilometers. So it will be three over five. Three over five, right? And 3 over 5 is 0 0.6, right? Now we have tan theta is equal to 0 0.6. And divide both sides by tan. This will go with this. And theta now will be equal to tan inverse of 0 0.6 so what's the tan inverse of 0 0.6 shift tan 0 0.6 is 30.96 30.96 so so theta is equal to 30. Point Nine six degrees. We've gotten our theta. So let's go back. It's thirty point nine six. So this place is thirty point nine. This place here is thirty point nine six. Nine six degrees. So that means if you add this 200 because from here to here all the way to here is 200 so if I add the 200 plus 30.96 we're going to get the bearing right so let's add it so 
I'm going to say bearing of Manu on this one, right? From dog base. Is equal to thirty point nine six plus two hundred degrees. Two hundred and thirty point nine six. But remember, the question says we should leave our answer in the nearest degree, right? So in the nearest degree, of course, it's going to be nearest degree is going to be round round this nine to this th zero here is going to be. 231 degrees so that's approximately in what nearest degrees right so this is the answer 231 degrees so that means from here up to this place is 231 degrees so that's all about the question. Let's move to the next one. All right, question 10B. The question says, a ladder 10 meters long lean against a vertical wall X meters height. The distance between the wall and the foot of the ladder is two meters longer than the height of the wall. Calculate the value of X. So in this case, we have a wall like this. Let me use a ruler. Let's assume we have a wall like this. <laughs> Don't worry about my diagram. And there's a ladder lean against it. So let's draw a ladder. So let's assume this is our diagram, okay? Um, from our question now, it says that the ladder is 10 meters long, right? From the question, you can see it. The ladder, 10 meters long. So since the ladder is 10 meters long, we're going to write, this is the height of the ladder, 10 meters. Lean against the vertical wall x meters height. So the height of this wall is x meters. We don't know. It's just x meters from the question. The distance between the wall, that is the distance between the wall and the ladder, between the wall and the foot of the ladder is 2 meters longer than the height of. So we're going to say 2 meters longer. That's 2 plus x is 2. 2 meters longer, 2 plus x meters. So that's the distance. And we are asked to find the value of x. So how are we going to go about it? Of course, we know that this is going to give us a right angle triangle. And if we were going to draw this, of course, we know we're going to have something like this. We're going to have something like this. And if we have something like this, of course, this is a right angle, right? Right angle triangle. So if this is a right angle triangle, we're going to use the Pythagoras rule to solve it. So, in this case, this will be our opposite and this will be our hypotenuse. And finally, this will be the adjacent. So, how are going to go about this? Of course, we know that we are looking for the value of x. Right? Since we are looking for the value of x, we can... Now, we can say we have... Using... We say find x. So using Pythagoras. By the time we use Pythagoras, we know that it's going to be hypotenuse square is equal to opposite square plus adjacent square. And in this case, what is our hypotenuse? Our hypotenuse is 10 meters. So we have 10 meters. 10 square is equal to our opposite is 
x which is x square plus our adjacent is 2 plus x all squared so this is what we have in this case now this is same thing as saying 10 square is 100 is equal to x square plus this one now there are there are two of this since there are two of this is same thing as saying 2 plus x into 2 plus x this is what we have and if you have this it's same thing as saying 100 is equal to x square plus this 2 times 2 and 2 times x then x times 2 and x times x right so this one is going to be 2 times 2 is 4 then we have plus 2 times x is 2x then we have x times 2 is 2x then we have x times x is x squared right so we have 100 is equal to x squared plus 4 plus 2x plus 2x we have 4x right so we have 4x plus x squared so what i'm going to do of course we're going to collect light terms and rearrange is that not remember we have x squared here and x squared here so there are two of them so we can collect light terms or we arrange them we're going to have 100 is equal to x squared bring the other x squared x squared then we have plus 4x there we have 4 we have rearranged it right if now you want to take this we're going to have 100 is equal to x squared plus x squared there are two of the x squared so we have 2 x squared right plus 4x plus 4 so in this case what i'm going to have we're going to have collect light terms now if you collect light terms you say collect light terms if you collect light terms this hundred will have to move to where this four is right so if we do that we're going to have 2x square plus 4x plus 4 now minus 100 this is what we're going to have um if you have that we're going to have 2x squared plus 4x plus plus 4 minus 4x 4 minus 100 is minus 96 so <laughs> What type of equation is this? Remember that that's not the answer. Is this equation not in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c? It's not in this form. Of course, it's in this form. So that means this is quadratic equation. We're going to solve it as quadratic equation. So in solving as quadratic equation, we are going to use any of the method either you can if you have time but the graphical method in this case it will waste your time we can use completing the square method factorization method or the formula method but in this case i'm going to use completing the square method because it's more of standard right don't worry just try it you you understand it so let's use the completing the square method to solve this as quadratic equation so let's use this bottom here so that we'll have enough place to solve it so the question is 2x square plus 4x minus 96 so if you have problem with completing the square this will be an opportunity for you to understand it right so so using the completing the square now the first thing to do is to equate it to zero if you equate this to zero we are going to have 2x squared plus 4x minus 96 is equal to 0, right? So the next thing to do is to move this minus 96 to the other side. And once you move it to the other side of the equality sign, it's going to change to plus 96. So it's going to be 2x squared plus 4x is equal to now 96. So then next step is to divide all through by the coefficient of x squared but in case the coefficient of x as one you don't need to divide all through by the coefficient so we're going to divide all through by the coefficient of x so x squared so we're going to have divide by 2 2 and 
two. So this one can go. Then two here is one. Two here is two, right? Two here is one. Two into ninety six. Two here is one. Two into ninety six is forty eight, right? So in this case, we're going to have. Remember, we have only. So next, we're going to have only x square left plus two x now is equals to forty eight. So what's the next step? The next step to do is to take the coefficient of x, which is this, and find the half. So the half of two is what one, right? Because two divided by two is one, and take the square of that one. So after getting the half, always take the square of the half. So if you take the square of the half, we're going to have one square right because that's the square of the half so getting the square of the half we're going to put it here we're going to set now we have x square plus 2x now plus 1 1 squared is equal to 48 plus 1 also 1 squared can you see now the next thing to do is to pick those one with square that's this and this that's what we use completing the square. If you pick those ones, you're going to have x square plus 1 square is equal to now. Just leave this one, neglect this. You're going to have 48 plus 1 square. So now, since these ones are having square, why can't we just set x plus 1 or square? Right? It's equal to. 48 plus 1 because 1 square is 1 right next is we're going to have up next we're going to have x plus 1 all squared is equals to 48 plus 1 is 49 so we're going to have 49 so what we're going to do next we're going to take the square root of both sides right so if you take the square of both sides we're going to have something like this and we have something like this. This cancel this. We are left with x plus one. Now you introduce what is equal to plus minus the square root of forty nine is seven. Then collect like times. If collect like times, this plus one will move to the other side, and it's going to be minus one, right? That's negative one. We're going to have x is equal to negative one plus minus seven. Now we have that x is equal to negative one. Plus seven or negative one, negative seven. So x now is going to be minus one plus seven is plus six or minus one minus seven is minus eight. So this is the value of x, right? But whenever you calculate this, pick the positive part of it, and that will be the value of the x so now in this case now the value of this x should be positive one so if this is a positive one what's the positive among the roots among the roots the positive one is six so we can say therefore x is equal to six what meters so that is the distance or that's the height of the building so that means this is the height the height here is six meters here and this way is going to be six plus two will be eight so the distance from the foot of the wall to the foot of the ladder is eight meters so this one is going to be six meters and this one is going to be six plus two which is eight meters so let's move to the next question all right question 11 the question says the table shows the distribution of the number of hours per day spent in studying by 50 students and these are the data the first question we are to calculate correct two decimal places the mean and be the standard deviation so in this case we're going to represent this one in a table right since we already have the number of hours per day and we have the number of students so 
The number of students in this case will be the frequency. All right, this is the table I have with me here. I'm going to use this. And as you know, the first column is going to be for the number of hours per day. That's the X. So we have four, four, five, six. This will be X. Four, five, six. We have four, five, six up to 11. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Right. The next thing is our frequency. Usually signified with F. So this frequency we have five seven five five seven five. Then we have nine twelve four. Nine twelve four. And we have three and five. Three and five. That's it. Remember that the questions remember the question says we should find the mean. And in finding the mean, so the, what's the first question before we proceed? Because knowing the question will help us in knowing what we'll write in the table, producing the next column, right? So we have to find mean. And finding mean, what's the formula for finding mean? That's the A. So we have A. Mean is something as find the mean, right? It's equal to the sum of f times x all over the sum of f, right? So that means we're going to find f of x here. Fx. So what is fx? Fx means f times x. So we're going to be multiplying f times x. That's the frequency times the x. So the first one is 4 times 5 is 20. So this is 20. Then we have 5 times 7 is 35. Then we have 6 times 5 is 30. Then we have 7 times 9 is 63. Then we have 8 times 12 is 96. Then we have 9 times 4 is 36. Then we have 10 times 3 is 30, and we have 11 times 5 is 55. So this is our f of x. So we're going to find the sum. We're going to find the sum, which is f of x. So the sum. All right, let's use the calculator and find the summation. So we have 20 from the top to the bottom plus 35 plus 30 plus 63 plus 96 plus 36 plus 30 plus 55 so the total is 300 and 65 so 365 that's the summation fx so another thing to do is to find the summation of f right from the that's the frequency now if you check the, our question the frequency shows that there are 50 students so if you add this frequency and you don't get 50 then that means it is wrong so this place is 50. So now substituting in this equation to get this formula, we're going to have what is summation fx? Summation fx is from the table, which is 365. So we're going to write 365. Now divide by f of x and summation of f, which is 50. So 300 and divide by 60, divide by 50. It is 7.3. Right, so we have 7.3 is equals to 7.3. So, therefore, x bar is 7.3. Remember, the question says we should leave our answer in two decimal places. So, if it is two decimal places, of course, we're going to add zero to this, right? So, it's going to be 
7.30 in two decimal places so this is the mean that's our a now we're going to use this mean to continue the solution of the standard deviation because the next question is standard deviation so this will help us in getting the remaining column the next column since we are looking for standard deviation the next question is standard deviation and the formula for calculating standard deviation is let's see b here the formula is giving us the standard deviation is equal to the square root of summation of f into x minus x bar square over summation the sum of f so that is the formula so now this formula will help us in getting our other column so the next column now we're going to find is x minus x bar so x minus x bar right so we're going to subtract x that's this x from x bar which is this our mean right so right the first one as we said is going to be x which is 4 minus x bar which is 7.3 so so 4 minus 7.3 is 3.3 so this is going to be 3 minus 3.3 next one is 5 minus 7.3 is 2.3 minus 2.3 that's what we're going to do next one is 6 minus 7.3 is 7.3 since it is x minus x bar 6 minus 7.3 Is minus 1.3 next one is 7 minus 7.3 of course it's going to be 0 0.3 So, based on this formula, we're going to find the square of this x minus x bar all squared, right? So, we're going to square all these ones. If you square them, remember that all the negative values will go turn into positive. So, let's start with the first one. We have 3 point minus 3.3 .3 squared. We're going to set bracket minus 3.3 okay square is 10.89 10.89 next one is minus 2.3 is 5.29 next is minus 1.3 is 1.69 next is 0 0.3 0 0.09 
next is 0 0.7 is 0 0.49 next is next is 1.7 1.7 is 2.89 next is 2.7 square is 7.29 and lastly is 3.7 is 13.69 13.69 13 so the next column will be for f multiplying by this right so let's see it's going to be f into x minus x bar squared so we're going to simply multiply this one by the frequency right so Let's do that. Now the first one is going to be 5 times 10.89. So 10.89 times 5 is 54.45. So we have 54.45. Five point two nine times seven is thirty seven point zero three. Next is one point six nine times five. Can you see this one here? Times this, right? That's what we're doing. Eight point four five. Up, this is minus zero point three, right? So zero point zero nine times nine is zero point eight one, right? The next one is zero point four nine times twelve. is equal to 5.88 next is 2.89 times 4 is 11 point is 11.56 11 11.56 point next is 7.29 times 3 So what's the next thing? The next thing is to add everything here down together so that we can get the summation. That is the meaning of this, right? So we're going to say from here. So we have this. So let's add it. Is equal to two hundred and eight point five. With two hundred eight point five. So this is our 
this value right and which is the same thing with this so in this case now we're going to substitute it into this now we're going to substitute into our equation our formula which will be equals to what is this this is actually this value here 208.5 Divide by what is f? The summation of f is what? Is 50. So we say 50. So let's divide it. Remember, there is a square root here. So this is going to be 208.5 divided by 50 is 4.17. 4 is 4.17. So take the square root so the answer is 2.04 goes to 2.04 so therefore our standard deviation is 2.04 so that is it for this question because we are asked to calculate the mean and the standard deviation Let's move to the next question. Number 12A. The question says in the diagram PQRS is a cycle centered O. If PO is equal to OP, that's line PO is equal to line OP. You can see this one here is trying to tell you that these sides are equal. Angle POQ is 150 degrees. This is P. O Q right so that means the angle is at the center which is O that's 150 degrees and Q S R is 40 degrees so Q S R is 40 degrees is 40 degrees and S Q P is 45 degrees which is here S Q P is 45, so this 45 is from here to here, 45 degrees. So we have three questions here. The first question is to calculate angle RQS. So let's try and see. All right, this is the diagram. We have to find angle RQS. Now find or calculate angle rqs and secondly angle ops angle o p s and lastly we have angle srq angle srq so all right, the first one is angle RQS. Where is angle RQS? So the first one, that's I. Let's find let's find angle RQS. So how are we going to do the first thing to do? We will notice. So where is angle RQS? So we have R Q S. So that means it's this angle. We're looking for this angle. That's the first angle we're going to find. So now, in order for us to get this angle, it will be very, very important if we will get this. So we have to get this angle. And getting this angle will help us in, in securing this, in getting this. So let's give it a try and see. Now, if you will check the relationship between this angle and this angle, there's a theory that says the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So that means in order for us to get this angle here, we're going to divide this 150 by 2. Twice the one at the circumference will give you the one at the center. So in that case, we're going to say angle what? We're going to say angle P S Q, right? Angle P S Q is equal to what? 150 divided by 2. So let's see. Angle P sq is equals to 150 degrees divided by 2 so we're going to say angle at center is twice 
angle at circumference so if that's the case this one is going to be 75 degrees because 150 divided by 2 is 75 degrees so that means this place is 75 degrees so after getting this we know that this 45 is from here to this place right and if we check we have a cyclic quadrilateral that is from here to here here up to here we have four sides right so since it's four sided it's a quadrilateral and opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary that is if you add the two angles should be able to give us 180 so if you add this plus this should be able to give us 180 so if that's the case if we want to get this we can use this angle and remember that this angle the sum of this angle here we're going to add 75 plus 40 so we're going to say angle p s r that's this one we we'll say angle p s r is equal to 75 plus 40 right so we'll add the two of them if we add the two of them like this what i'm going to have so 75 plus 40 is going to be 115 so we have 115 degrees so this place is 115 let me use a different color 115 degrees so we've gotten this so now we'll say that this angle is supplementary to this entire angle if add the two should give us 180 degrees so how are we going to do because getting the angle will help us to get this small angle here so we're going to say angle pqr that's angle p q r that's this entire angle it's going to be equals to 180 degrees minus what minus angle p s r because they are supplementary so the opposite angle of cycle quadrilateral was the angles of quadrilateral are supplementary so since they are supplementary this is going to be 180 degrees minus what is psr this is the psr we've gotten it to be 115 115 degrees so 180 minus 115 degrees is going to give us 65 degrees so this is 65 degrees so that means the entire angle here this entire angle from here up to this place is is going to be 65 degrees so let's write here so since this place is 65 degrees i want to find this small one here of course we're going to say this 65 and that's 65 minus this minus this 45 here we're going to get the remaining one right so our angle rqs is equals to 65 the entire angle minus that 45 degrees is going to be 20 degrees right so that means this place this entire place from here should be 20 degrees so that means if you add 45 plus 20 should give us 65 which is correct so we've gotten our first angle which is 20 degrees so the next question is we are to find angle ops so number two now we say angle ops we're going to find angle ops and where's angle ops of course angle o p s which is here right that's the angle we're going to find that's the second question so let's mark it we're looking for this place so how can we get this you can only get this if we know the value of this angle and we know the value of this angle so we're going to add this this here this one so that i'm subtracted from 360 degrees then we'll get what is here so now the question is how are we going to get those ones right so in order to get this small one here from here to here right remember that 
is from here to here that is 45 degrees 45 degrees. so in order to get this small one we will have to get this from here to here right so by the time you get from here to here subtract this 45 since 45 is from here to here 45 minus this one here will get this small one so now how are we going to get this how can we get this it's simple why because you can see that this side and this side are the same since they are the same now their base this angle and this angle will be the same right isosceles triangle isosceles triangle is type of triangle that two sides are equal and the angle base angle are also equal so if that's the case now you can name this one to be a angle a and this one angle a right so if this a now if this one is a a and this one a is a you can add this one now we can set angle s angle o p q angle o p q which is this one eh? is the same thing with angle o q p o q p which is this and um, what is the reason the reason is base of isosceles angle triangle icon so if you add this well, first we know that if you add, if you add 100a plus a plus 150 degrees is equals to 300 and because 180 because 180 degrees is going to be a sum of angle in a triangle It's 180 degrees right so in this case 2a because a plus a is 2a plus 150 degrees because 180 degrees so this one is going to be 2a is because 180 degrees minus 150 degrees because this 150 will move to the other side and once it moves it becomes subtraction so so in this case we're going to have 2a is because 150 minus 180 degrees is 30 degrees divide both side by Two, right to get a so two and two two here we go and 30 divided by two is is equals to now a is equals to 15 degrees so we've gotten our a so go back to the diagram so this one here is 15 degrees and this one too is 15 degrees so with this one now we'll be able to get this small angle here why because from here to here is 45 we're going to say 45 minus this 15 then we'll get this small angle so so we're going to say let me use the other side angle o q s that's the small angle here is going to be equals to 45 minus 15 45 minus 15 which is equals to 30 degrees so this place here from here this angle from here to here is 30 degrees so this one is 30 we've gotten this 30 so now the next thing is to get from here to here and angle sum of angle in a point is 360 so if we subtract this 150 from 360 we'll get this so we're going to say angle P O Q is equal to that's this from here to here. It's gonna be three hundred and sixty minus one hundred and fifty. That's sum of angle in a in a point on a point. Angles on a point. It's three hundred and sixty, right? Of course, this is going to be 360 minus 150, so it's going to be equals to 210 degrees. So this place, this O here, is 210 degrees. So with this now, we'll be able to get what is here. How? By the time we add this 210 plus 30 plus 100 plus 75. 
and subtract from 360 sum of angle in a quadrata will give us this here so let's do that see angle OPS is equal to 360 minus into we add it 210 plus 30 plus 75 so subtract it going to be equals to 360 minus 210 plus 30 is 240 240 plus 75 is 315 degrees so subtract it so 360 minus 315 is equals to is actually equals to 45 degrees so that's our answer this place is actually 45 degrees can you see so let's move to the next question the next question we are to find angle SRQ so where's angle SRQ R this place this is very very easy why because we already have 40 degrees here we have 20 degrees here if you add it 40 plus 20 and subtract it from 180 degrees we're going to get r right so let, let's do that and see so we say question three so question three now as we said is going to be we have to find s r q which we said this is something as is going to be equals to s r q is equals to what 180 degrees minus what 40 plus 20. remember that this is sum of angle in quadrilateral is 260 degrees so that's the reason for this entire solution so now we have this what, what is the reason the reason here is sum of angles in a triangle so this one is going to be srq is equals 180 minus 40 plus 20 is 60 degrees right so this is going to be 180 minus 60 is 180 20 so that's the answer this place 120 degrees so very easy right so with this let's move to the next all right question 12b the question says a straight line passes through the points 3 and 0 and we have 2 and minus 1 but to find a that's i the gradient and to the equation of the line so let's go we have the first one i now we know that we're looking to look for the gradient now I'm looking for the gradient now know that we have two points in this point we have this one will always be x1 and this one will be y1 then we have x2 my we have what y2 and we know that gradient is given by m is equals to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 right so this one is going to be m is equals what is our y2 our y2 is minus one which is here so this one is going to be minus y1 is zero over x2 which is two minus x1 which is three so this one is going to be minus one minus zero is something as minus one over minus we have two minus three is minus one so minus one divided by minus one we know that minus cancel minus we're going to have one so that's our gradient right then the second part of the question that's two say so we should find the equation of the line so equation of line is always given by y minus y1 all over x minus x1 is equals to the gradient that's it 
So now we're going to have So this is going to be y minus what is our y1 our y1 of course is from the equation is zero and x1 is three so i'm going to use that y1 is zero over x minus what is x1 x1 is three is equals to the gradient the gradient is equal to what we know that you can just take it from here minus one over minus one so cross multiply if we cross multiply now, we're going to have y minus 0, which is the same thing as y, times 1 is equal to x minus 3 multiplied by minus 1. So we're going to have minus y times 1 is minus y is equal to minus times x is going to be minus x, minus times plus minus y is minus 3 is going to be plus 3 right of course if you are looking for y not minus y right so you can multiply both sides by minus sign minus 1 so we're going to say multiply both sides by minus 1 is going to be minus 1 times minus y is equals to minus x plus 3 multiplied by minus 1 also so this one minus times minus 1 minus 1 times y is y equals to y minus 1 times x minus Minus 1 times minus x is x. Minus times plus is minus. 1 times 3 is 3. So this is the equation of the line. So that's it for this question. Let's move to the next question. All right, question 13a. The question says, in Sam's first birthday, his grandfather deposited an amount of $1,000 in a deposit compounded at 4% interest annually. Find out how much is in the account if Sam is four years old all right from the question now the first thing to note here is that he deposited one thousand dollars so that is the principal so we're going to say the principal that's p the principal p is equal to one thousand dollars right and the rate of four percent right because you should know that rate is always in percentage, so the rate here in is what four percent. So we say the R plus rate is equal to four percent. Now the years. Now there's something you need to understand about the years. That's the time. Remember that he is already one years old when he when the grandfather deposited the cash. Why? Because he said that in his first birthday. So that means he's already one year old. So in order for us to get the time. We're going to subtract that this four years. Sorry, we're going to say four minus this one year because it's already it's his first birthday. So he have already is already one. So we're going to say four minus one is equal to what three years. So this is it. So with this, we're going to use the formula. One, well, what's the formula? The formula is given as a that's amount is equal to principal into one plus rate over 100 to the power of t this is a formula for compound interest so let's substitute if you substitute now what is our p our p is one thousand dollars into one plus what is our r our r is our rate right so 4 over 100 to the power of t which is our time in this case which is what three years so this is going to be 1000 into 1 plus 4 divided by 100 is 0 0.04 to the power of 3 so this is going to be equals to 1000 into 1 plus 0 0.04 is Going to be 1.04 to the power of 3. So, what is 1.04 to the power of 3? That's we're going to multiply 1.04 by itself three times. So, we're going to say 1.04 times 
times 1.04 and is 1.12 so this is going to be 1000 into 1.12 so if you multiply this, you got 1000 times 1.12, so say times 1000 is $1,124. So it's going to be $1,124, right? 0 0.86. 0 0.86. So this is the amount that will be in sam's account in four years or when he is four years old so let's move to the next question all right question 13b we have a diagram here the question says in the diagram in the diagram a b c d are points on the cycle center o right if line a b is equal to line BC, so you can see that they are the same here. The presence of this shows that these angles are, or these sides are equal. And angle ADC is 50. So ADC is 50. Remember that the letter that is at the center carries the angle. So that's why you can see this 50 here. We have to find angle BAD. So Let's give it a try so let me draw it first so this is a cycle and in the cycle we have a straight line from a to d so let's draw it so we'll draw it remember that this is o right the center then we have these three sides here here and here So this is it. I remember that this side and this side are equal, right? And this place is 50 degrees. So this is it. So let's start the solution and see what. Remember the question says we should find angle b a d right and where is angle b a d remember that this a the angle is at the center the angle at the center is what we're looking for so um leveling this we have a b c d right so so a b c and d and we're looking for a right B A D. So this is what we're looking for from here to here. That's what we're looking for. So in this case, the first thing to do is we can reconstruct this to make it easier. So if we reconstruct, use your ruler to construct this line here. So we use a red line to show that it's a constructed line. So we have something like this. If you construct it this way, right? The first thing to do, to see here is that this is a quadrilateral, a cyclic quadrilateral, and a cyclic quadrilateral, the angle, the opposite angles are always supplementary. That means this angle B is supplementary to this angle D. And what is the meaning of supplementary angle? Supplementary angle, these are angles that when you add the two of them, should be able to give you 180 degrees. So we're going to say angle ABC, which is this one here, angle A. B C is equals to 180 degrees minus 50. And what is the reason? The reason here is opposite angle of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So 
Now, this is going to be 180 degrees minus 50 degrees is going to give us 130 degrees. So, this is equals to 130 degrees. So, that means this place is 130 degrees. And after getting this, that means it's very, very possible for us to get these angles. Why? Because this is an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle is a type of triangle that two sides and the base angles are equal. So if you get one of the angles, it will be the same with the other angle. Why? Because the bases are the base angles are equal. So in this case, we're going to say we're going to say this angle here is equal to this angle. So we're going to say angle D B A C is equals to angle A C B. So that means this angle is equal to this angle. Uh, when they are the same, we can as well say that which is equal to if you add which is equal to if you add, let's make this one to be angle A and this one angle another A too because they are the same. It's going to be A plus A plus 130 degrees is equal to 180, right? So A plus A is going to give us 2A plus 130 degrees is equal to 180. So this one is going to be 2A is equal to 180 minus 130. Because this one is going to move to the other side, right? So and it will turn to more subtraction. So this one here is going to be 2a is equal to 180 minus 130 is going to be 50. So this is 50 degrees. Divide both sides by 2. 2. This one will go here. And 50 divided by 2. So a is 25. So that means here is 25. So this is 25 here. And this one too is 25 since they are the same right so what is the reason we said base of an isosceles triangle equal right so now after getting this the next thing to note is that since this one is a semicycle angle resting produced due to semicircle then remember that there is a theory that says that angle in a semicircle will always be perpendicular so that means this place here is 90 degrees here right so now we can say a c d angle a C D is equal to 90 degrees. Why? We said angle in a semicycle. We said angle in semicycle is 90 degrees. So after getting this, remember that we are looking for this angle here. But we have gotten part of it, which is 25 degrees. So how can we get this? Of course, it's very easy. Since this one is a triangle right um since it's a triangle we already have 90 here and 50 so by the time at 90 plus 50 and you subtract it from 180 degrees we're going to get that small angle so we're going to say now angle c a d which is this one here is equal to 180 degrees minus then 50 plus 90 and what is the reason the reason is sum of angle in a triangle is 180 degrees in triangle is 180 degrees so that means this one is going to be 180 minus 50 plus 90 is 100 and 40 degrees so 180 minus 140 is going to be 40 degrees so this is 40 degrees right so we've gotten this small angle to be 40 degrees
right so how can we get this of course by the time we add 25 plus 40 so we're going to say so it's going to be angle b a d is equal to 25 plus 40 which is going to be 65 degrees so that means from here to here is 65 degrees so i think this is the last question all right all right all right we've been following to the end congratulations we've solved the complete 13 question of 2021 yac mathematics so of course learning doesn't stop here if you want to practice more and look for more questions more years and practice remember if you want to support the channel don't forget to like share and subscribe please see you in the next video thanks for watching